Section 28 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Lycoming County. Formed April 13, 1795, named for creek called by Delaware Indians Ligani Hana, Sandy Stream, or Lycomic, mountainous with rolling hills, North Mountain, highest land, 2,550 feet above sea level, formerly a lumber region, now chief industries are agriculture and manufacturing. Williamsport, county seat, founded 1796, population 36,198, has a system of well-kept roads. The Grampian and Valamont drives wind over the hills north of the city, giving a view over the West Branch Valley that is remarkable for extent and beauty. Courthouse built in 1860, city hall and post office are mid-Victorian. Masonic buildings include the Masonic Temple, Scottish Rites Building, Acacia Club, and Howard Club. Franklin School, Mulberry Street, north of East 4th Street, has mural decorations of local scenery, a sweep of the Susquehanna near Jersey Shore, artist J. Wesley Little. Christ Protestant Episcopal Church, East 4th and Mulberry Streets, has windows from England, also by Tiffany and Lamb. The James V. Brown Public Library, East 4th Street, French Renaissance, Pennsylvania White Marble, built in 1907. Architect Edgar V. Sealer, Philadelphia contains a small permanent collection of paintings and an original portrait of Washington by Rembrandt Peel, painted in 1795. Art exhibitions are held here. Central Presbyterian Church, opposite Park Hotel, has windows by J. and R. Lamb. Covenant Presbyterian, West 4th and Center Streets, has large windows by Tiffany and Lamb. Trinity Protestant Episcopal, West 4th Street and Trinity Place, modern parish house used as a community center. Opposite is Way's Garden, two and one-half acres, with fine old elm trees. Annunciation, Roman Catholic Church, West 4th and Walnut Streets, Tiffany Window, The Ascension, St. John's Protestant Episcopal, Architects, During, Oki, and Ziegler, Windows by Nicola DiCenzo. Brandon Park, beautiful with fine shrubbery, trees, and winding paths, has a bandshell, playgrounds, swimming pool. Monument erected by Daughters of the American Revolution, 4th and Cemetery Streets, on site of massacre of white settlers by Indians. Site of French Margaret's Village, niece of Madame Montour, noted on Skull's map in 1759, is now within limits of the Seventh Ward. She was a notable character and enforced prohibition in her town. Four miles east of Williamsport, on west side, mouth of Loyal Sunk Creek near Montoursville, is site of Austin Wacken, or Atsuagi, home of Madame Montour, famous French half-breed who lived here from 1727 and was still there in 1742, when Count Zinzendorf came to the village. The Great Indian Trail from Muncie led up the Susquehanna River, on line of the present highway, through Austin Wacken, to East 3rd Street, Williamsport, then north of 3rd and Penn Streets to Park Street, there turned to West 4th Street and to Lycoming Creek, French Margaret's Town. Muncie, population 2054, on site of Fort Wallace, in 1778, commanded by Colonel Thomas Hartley. St. James's Protestant Episcopal Church, built 1859, English Gothic, architect Richard Upjohn, New York, who first used principles of Gothic architecture in America, has Tiffany Memorial Window to Reverend Edwin Leitner. In Muncie Cemetery is monument to John Brady, a famous Indian fighter, granite shaft of excellent proportions. His grave is in the Old Hall's burial ground at Hall Station. Site of Fort Brady, south side of Muncie, residence of Captain John Brady, fortified by stockade, was place of refuge continuing so after his death, burned with Fort Muncie in 1779 when Muncie Valley was overrun. Another on the frontier was Fort Minigar, built 1774 at White Deer Mills, north bank of White Deer Creek, probably stockade, included both fort and mills, burned 1779. Picture Rocks Village, founded 1848. Here, Indian picture writings formerly decorated walls of rocks, rising from Big Muncie Creek. Studio of the late J. Wesley Little. Fort Andes, opposite Jersey Shore, marked by Daughters of the American Revolution. End of section 28. Section 29 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. The LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Somerset County. Formed April 17, 1795. Named for Somerset, England. Chief industries are agriculture and mining. A mountain country of remarkable beauty, largely forests, although glades, or natural meadows, about the headwaters of streams are numerous and extensive enough to have the name, the glades, applied to the whole county. Standing on the summit of either mountain range that bounds it, east and west, one gets a view of unsurpassed beauty. A distance of twenty miles, the other stands out in bold outline, with intervening country of hill, forest, glade, valley, and numerous watercourses, which find their way to the Ohio, Susquehanna, and Potomac rivers. 
immortalized in James Whitcomb Riley's Monks the Hills of Somerset. Nearly all this country, between the crests of the Allegheny Mountains and Laurel Hills, is one vast coal field extending over the entire length, from Maryland to Cambria County, every vein of coal from the Great Pittsburgh Seam down being represented. Traditions of Indian villages are in the famous Turkey Foot, Castleman River forms middle toe at Town of Confluence, also in Elk Lick Township, Indian arrowheads and stone implements are found. In 1749, Christopher Gist, agent of the Ohio Company, was the first white man known to have crossed Somerset County. His route along Nemacolin's Trail, a Delaware Indian chief, led him through Addison Township to the later-known Great Crossing. Again, passing through in 1750, he kept a diary. George Washington in 1753 crossed through Addison Township with four frontiersmen, one as Indian interpreter, one French interpreter. Every spot of earth that Washington trod in the line of duty is sacred soil for all true Americans. He passed through Somerset eleven times. On Braddock's ill-fated expedition in 1755, he lay for ten days at the Great Crossing, on a bed of sickness, exempt by order of General Braddock. First road cut in 1754 was under Washington's direction. Afterwards, substantially, the Braddock Road, following Nima Colin's trail, the chief who guided him. It began at Cumberland, Maryland, then a fort, and reached the Yafugani River, south of present village of Summerfield, at the Great Crossing, marked only historic marker in the county. The National Turnpike, commenced in 1811, has the same general course, occasionally using the same roadbed, crosses the Yafugani at Summerfield over a great stone bridge, still in good repair, completed July 4, 1818, and turned over to the United States on that day. President James Monroe and members of his cabinet attended the opening of the bridge. This road became a great highway, over which passed a vast commerce, both east and west. Wayside inns were nearly every mile, now none exist. The Ensley, Stone House, in Summerfield, built 1818, long a noted tavern, is now a private residence. Next great road in this county was the Forbes, or Bouquet Road, cut by Colonel Bouquet in 1758. It traversed the county from east to west, and like the Braddock Road, was purely military, constructed under protection of a strong army. Over it passed the army of General Forbes on way to conquer Fort Duquesne. George Washington was with this expedition in command of the 1st Virginia Regiment. The road started at Bedford and followed an Indian trail. It was improved between 1785 and 95 and became known as the Great Road, afterwards about 1806 as the Stoystown and Bedford Turnpike. Later taken by the State Highway Department, it is now a great speedway, the Lincoln Highway. Entering the county at Buckstown, crossing Stony Creek at Cantner, one mile west is Stoystown over 100 years old. Six miles farther west is Jennerstown, laid out in 1822 by General James Wells, who in 1771 was wounded by Indians. On Laurel Hills, three miles west of Ursina, is the Jersey Baptist Church with ancient burial ground, has written records since 1775, first log church built 1788, twice rebuilt, fine mountain scenery all along the route and several places of historic interest, here and in other parts of the county, sites of forts which date back to French and Indian Wars and the Revolution, unmarked. Few are now living who can point out the locality of these historic places with any degree of certainty. The Glades Road, laid out in 1772 from four miles west of Bedford to the Yafigeni, via Stony Creek, was made turnpike in 1816. Along this road in 1810, on a farm nine miles east of Somerset, was born Judge Jeremiah Sullivan Black, Chief Justice of Pennsylvania, United States Attorney General and Secretary of State. First railroad through Somerset County was the Pittsburgh Division of the picturesque Baltimore and Ohio, opened in 1871 with its famous tunnels. At Mason and Dixon's line, Negro Mount is about 2,825 feet above sea. Somerset, county seat, Population 3,121, laid out in 1795, elevation above sea level 2,180 feet, has had three consuming fires and has been rebuilt with greater beauty. Courthouse built 1906, French Renaissance, Indiana Limestone, architect J.H. Fuller, Uniontown. Soldiers' Monument in Grounds, pedestal with names of more than 400 Somerset County men who died in war for the Union, 1861-65. Somerset Trust Company, Indiana Limestone, built 1916, Architects, Mowbray and Company, New York, Renaissance, beautiful proportions. Churches, built by E.H. Walker, Somerset, all with memorial windows, mostly made by Pittsburgh firms, are Grace United Evangelical, Brick, 1914, The Christian Church and Parsonage, Doric, Brick, 1910, St. Paul's Reformed, Gothic, Brick, Remodeled, 1915, also Trinity Lutheran, Corinthian, built 1877, Brick, Architect M. Simon, Harrisburg. Throughout the county are many churches. In some places where there is not even the semblance of a village, there are churches that would be a credit to any town. End of section 29.
Section 30 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Green County. Formed February 9, 1796. Named for General Nathaniel Green. Surface, fertile valleys, hills, and rolling uplands making a region of natural beauty, well watered from the tributaries of the Monongahela River and Wheeling Creek. There are still a number of covered wooden bridges throughout the county, from 50 to 100 years old. A very old double bridge crosses Ten Mile Creek, one mile east of Waynesburg. Formerly an old forge and furnace were on this creek. Many Indian village sites that were occupied long before the advent of the Whites are here. Their age is indicated by large old trees growing on their mounds. Three distinct forms of ancient burial are found here, showing that three waves of population swept over this land before the coming of the Europeans. The two principal Indian mounds now in the county are at Crow's Mills. Two great Indian trails cross the southern part of the state, the Warrior Branch passing through this county to the Ohio River. A chain of forts crossed Greene County, ending at Fort Zane, now Wheeling. Three are especially well known. Fort Ryerson and Blockhouse at western end of county, Fort Jackson west of Waynesburg, and Fort Gerard on Whiteley Creek. Seven miles west of Greensboro, the birthplace of Robert J. Burdett and his eminent sister, Mary G. Burdett. The earliest glassworks were established by Albert Gallatin on the Monongahela in 1785. They were the forerunner of the vast business at Pittsburgh and vicinity first settlers were Scotch-Irish. Chief industries, agriculture, and the mining of bituminous coal. The Pittsburgh vein of rich depth and highest coking value, and three other veins, almost as rich, namely the Waynesburg, Freeport, and Mapletown. Oil and gas production is very valuable. There are a number of gas pumping stations within the county. The Philadelphia Gas Company has one at Brave, said to be the largest in the world. Near Brave is Jollytown, with a monument to Jesse Taylor, first Greene County soldier to fall in the Civil War. County seat, Waynesburg, population 3,332, laid out in 1796, named for General Anthony Wayne, who, with his troops, proved most successful in ridding the section of the Indians. A chain of parks with formal gardening goes through the center of the town, divided by streets. In the center of one is the Soldiers' Monument, erected in 1899. Waynesburg College, empowered by the legislature to confer honorary degrees, faces College Park. Portrait of Dr. A.B. Miller, a former president, is in Alumni Hall. Courthouse, colonial with cupola, surmounted by a wooden statue of General Green, was erected in 1852. Brick, painted gray, has six lofty Corinthian columns supporting the front porch, jail on the same ground. First Methodist Church, Romanesque, Cleveland Stone, has memorial windows. The public schools are liberally provided with the Elson photogravures, reproductions of great masterpieces, mostly in sepia. Five miles southeast of Waynesburg is Gordon Ridge. Nettle Hill, 16 miles southwest, both notable places of particularly beautiful scenery. Carmichael's, originally New Lisbon, one of the oldest towns, beautifully located, has Green Academy, incorporated 1810. Senator Albert Cummins was born near here. End of section 30. Section 31 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Wayne County. Formed March 21, 1798, named for General Anthony Wayne, a picturesque mountainous section possessing more lakes than any other county in the state, some over 2,000 feet above sea, ranging in area from 3 to 358 acres, many of them well stocked with bass, perch, pickerel, and other fish, while the whole county abounds in trout streams. From north to south is a wonderful expanse of scenery. Farview, altitude 1,500 feet, on the Music Mountain near Waymart, includes, in its panorama, the distant Catskills. From the southern roads, extended views are also enjoyed. A beautiful drive follows the Wallenpawpack Creek, slow water, passing the falls at Hawley, meeting place of the Pawpack Indians. Good roads continue to Milford and the Water Gap, or to Goldsboro, Scranton, and Wilkesbury. On the road from Honesdale to Carbondale, the path of the old Delaware and Hudson Gravity Railroad may still be traced. Early industries were hunting, lumbering, and tanning. Now the modern creamery is an important factor, also stock raising and agriculture. One hundred years ago, a small colony of Germans settled a half-mile west of Bethany and started a glass factory, utilizing native sand and clay. From 1847 to 1861, window glass was manufactured at Tracyville. In 1865, Christian Dorflinger built large factories for manufacturing and cutting glass at White Mills, five miles south of Honesdale. Glass-cutting factories are now numerous in the county, and gold decorating of glass has been introduced among Wayne's industries. Honesdale made the county seat in 1841, Population 2,756, altitude 1,000 feet, 
named for Philip Hone, president of the Delaware and Hudson Canal Company, which started here for tidewater at Rondout on the Hudson, built 1826-28, abandoned 1898. Honesdale owes its growth and prosperity to the canal. It was one of the anthracite stepping stones to a waiting market. Three locomotives were purchased by the canal company to draw coal from the mines in Carbondale and vicinity to the canal at Honesdale. The first one, the Stour Bridge Lion, was brought by canal boat to Honesdale in 1829, and a trial trip was made. The wooden rails, then used for the railroad, were not firm enough for the strain of the engine, and it was never run again. However, Wayne County takes precedence in having had the first locomotive ever run in America make its trial and only trip at Honesdale. It is now in the Smithsonian Institute, Washington. The New York and Erie Railroad follows the course of the old canal through the town. Courthouse built 1880, brick with stone trimmings. Contains portrait of General Anthony Wayne, copied from original in Wayne family, Philadelphia, by Miss Jenny Brownscomb, native of Wayne County. Two large parrot guns in front are relics of the Civil War. It faces Central Park, where stands a soldier's monument, dedicated in 1869 by Governor John W. Geary. Pedestal with bronze plates inscribed with names of nearly 350 Wayne County men lost in Civil War. Also fountain in center of park, memorial of the National Centennial, both placed by the women of Honesdale, who are said to be the first in the state to organize a village improvement society. They, aided by the town council, have done much for the beautifying of the town. The parks have received special attention. Besides Central Park are North Park, and on either side of the Main Street Bridge lie Torrey Park, West, and Riverside Park, East, overshadowed by Irving Cliff, 300 feet high, named in honor of Washington Irving, who, while in Honesdale in 1841 with Philip Hone, climbed to the summit of the ledge overlooking the town. Grace Protestant Episcopal Church, Gothic, stone, contains white marble font, good design, gift of Philip Hone, in 1848. Baptist Church, wood, classic, with ionic columns supporting the porch, built 1843-45. to Glen Dyberry Cemetery contains grave of Attorney General Samuel E. Dimmick, died 1875, marked by granite shaft. His residence, Brick, is south of the courthouse. North of Honesdale is Stone Arch Bridge over Carley Brook, made in 1909. Builder, Samuel Brown from England. Bethany, first county seat in 1800, was staked out in the primeval forest. Courthouse, built 1800, is now used as a store. New courthouse and brick offices were built 1820-23, to the office building still standing. Courthouse was abandoned in 1842. After it was remodeled, it became the University of Northern Pennsylvania, with the public square as campus, and was burned in 1857. Between the old cemetery and the street, stands the first Presbyterian church erected in the county in 1822. Several old dwellings have beautiful colonial doorways. An old tavern built by Henry Drinker in 1802 still stands. Pleasant Mount, altitude 1,600 feet, 16 miles north of Honesdale, residence of General Samuel Meredith, officer in the Revolutionary War and United States Treasurer under Washington, commission dated September 11, 1789. He lived near on manor lands from 1803 to 17, said to have been visited by Thomas Jefferson. The house was burned. Granite Monument in his honor was erected by the state, unveiled 1904. Represents a continental general from a design by Miss Clara Keene. Architect Martin Caulfield, both of Honesdale. The Delaware River forms the eastern boundary. A woodland follows the river. At Milanville is the old Skinner House, oldest still in use in Wayne County. Loopholes near the roof were made for defense against Indians. Many Indian relics were found around here. Wayne County's only battlefield, unmarked, is in Sterling Township, called Little Meadows, Near it passed an old Indian trail from Delaware River to Wyoming Valley. On July 4, 1778, the day after the Wyoming Massacre, Indians attacked a few white people with loss on both sides. On the eastern and Belmont Highway is a nine-sided stone schoolhouse of early construction. Three others are found in the county. End of section 31. Section 32 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta R. Chambeau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Cicilla. Adams County. Formed January 22, 1800. Named for John Adams, then President of the United States. Notable for the Battle of Gettysburg. Chief Industry Agriculture. County seat, Gettysburg. Founded in 1786. Population, 4,439. First court held in residence of General James Geddes. Present courthouse contains portraits of Justices Marshall and Gibson. Federal Building, the Post Office, Marble, Corinthian, Architect J. Knox Taylor, Washington, D.C. Contains interesting battlefield museum, maps, and miniature reproductions. The United States Battlefield Commission has offices here. 
The Wills Building, at the corner of Center Square and Lincoln Highway, is where President Lincoln stayed November 1863, before his famous address. Presbyterian Church, nearly 176 years old, where President Lincoln worshipped November 19, 1863, the pew he occupied has a bronze plate, church used as hospital during the battle. Lutheran Theological Seminary, west of town on Seminary Ridge, contains large copy of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, painted by the late James B. Sward, Philadelphia, also used as hospital by Union soldiers. It is said that General Lee took observations from its tower. Near, in Reynolds Grove, General John F. Reynolds was killed, place marked by bronze equestrian statue, sculptor H.K. Bush Brown. In the Dobbin House, Stone on Steinbrier Avenue, built 1776, was conducted first classical school in Pennsylvania, west of the Susquehanna. Southeast corner of Washington and High Streets was the first home of Pennsylvania College, established in 1832, now northwest of the town on a beautiful campus. Main building, Old Dorm, is fine colonial architecture. Jenny Wade War Museum near Cemetery shows bullet marks, home of only citizen killed during the battle, has collection of relics and curios. Artists of note born here are Charles Morris Young and Leighton Bueller. The battlefield covered 16,000 acres, not including cavalry field four miles east. Union Army was commanded by General George G. Meade, 80,000 to 90,000 men. Confederate Army commanded by General Robert E. Lee, about 80,000 to 85,000 men. Desperate charges were made in hand-to-hand -hand conflicts. The Cyclorama, Battle of Gettysburg, painted by Paul Philippeteau, is on exhibition. The Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association was incorporated by the Legislature of Pennsylvania to hold and preserve the battleground, with natural and artificial defenses, as at time of battle, and to mark definitely lines of battle of all troops. It is now a national park and cemetery, in charge of a commission, appointed by the Secretary of War, including over 7,000 acres with 50 miles of Macadam roads, amid most beautiful scenery. Here we have the greatest number of memorials in Pennsylvania, erected by the various states. Among the 404 monuments and 894 markers are the National Monument, White Granite, Four Figures at Base, Representing War, History, Peace, Plenty. Shaft Support Statue of Liberty. All figures are of Italian marble, carved in Italy. Sculptor, Randolph Rogers. Bronze Equestrian Statue, General George Gordon Meade. Near Center of Line of Battle, Sculptor, H.K. Bush Brown. Bronze Equestrian Statue, General John Sedgwick, North of Little Round Top, Sculptor, H.K. Bush Brown. Bronze Equestrian Statue, General Winfield Scott Hancock, East Cemetery Hill, Sculptor F. L. Well. Bronze Equestrian Statue, General Henry W. Slocum, on Stevens Knoll, near Culps Hill, Sculptor E. C. Potter. Bronze Statue, General John F. Reynolds, at entrance to National Cemetery, Sculptor J. Q. A. Ward. Bronze Statue, General Alexander Stewart Webb, Sculptor J. Massey Rind, placed at the bloody angle where Pickett's charge was halted and beaten back. General Webb was the officer in command at this spot. Bronze statue, General Warren, on Little Round Top. Sculptor, Gerhardt. Pennsylvania State Monument, double arch, 110 feet high, 80 feet square at base, crowned with domes surmounted by a bronze victory. Eight bronze statues at base of ionic columns. Lincoln, Sculptor, J. Otto Schweitzer. Curtin, Sculptor, W. Clark Nobel. Mead, Sculptor, Lee O. Lorry. Hancock, Sculptor, Cyrus P. Dallin. Pleasanton, Sculptor, J. Otto Schweitzer. Reynolds, Sculptor, Lee O. Lorry. D. McM. Gregg, Sculptor, J. Otto Schweitzer. Bernie, Sculptor, Lee O. Lorry. Bronze tablets around base contain names of every soldier of Pennsylvania in battle at Gettysburg, 34,530. New York State Monument, tall granite shaft, supporting bronze Statue of Liberty, with four bronze battle reliefs in pedestal. Bronze trophy, state shield, and corps badges at base of shaft. Sculptor, Casper Buberl. Vermont State Monument, fluted shaft surmounted by statue of General George J. Stannard. Irish Brigade Monument, Celtic Cross with Irish Hound at base. Sculptor, Rudolph O'Donovan. In the National Cemetery are buried 3,589 Union soldiers. It was dedicated November 1863, when President Lincoln delivered his immortal address, ending, This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. 50th anniversary of the battle, fought July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 1863, was celebrated here in 1913 by reunion of veterans. The Russell Tavern, now a residence on Old Shippensburg Road, three miles north of Gettysburg, is where Washington stopped in 1794 after quelling the Whiskey Rebellion. In Cashtown, the Civic League has formed a recreation park, using the Old Tavern for a library. West of this town is the Old Pittsburgh and Philadelphia Pike, used by both armies during the Civil War. 
Conewago Mission at Edgegrove was established in 1741 by two Jesuit missionaries. Present church, Colonial, Stone, was built in 1787. Enlarged 1851. Paintings over the altar and in the transepts were made by Francis Stecker. Roman Catholic missions were established within a radius of 20 miles from this mother house. End of section 32. Section 33 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Center County. Formed February 13, 1800, named for its position in center of state, notable for the state college. Chief industry, agriculture, formerly mining and manufacture of iron. Limestone is extensively quarried. Coal is mined about Phillipsburg and Snowshoe. The state owns 21,000 acres of forest reserve, through which several of the state highways pass. Fire line cuts made by state foresters may be seen. For a wonderful mountain ride, take the state road from Tyrone, Blair County, to Belfont, following Bald Eagle Valley and passing several small towns named for women, where remains of iron furnaces may be seen. Near Snowshoe Intersection, a state highway leads up the mountains with unsurpassed views to Snowshoe. Follow this road to Phillipsburg, then to Bald Eagle Valley. Another beautiful ride is on the state road from Mifflinburg, Union County, across the mountain, through Milheim and Spring Mills to the Old Fort. From Spring Mills, a short trip may be made to Penn's Cave. This is Penn's grandest cavern. The trip through the cave is 1,400 feet in length, made in motorboats carrying torches or acetylene lights. The water is a transparent greenish color. Greatest depth, 35 or 40 feet. A road from Lewiston, Mifflin County, to Lock Haven, via Belfont, crosses the Seven Mountains with wonderful views. At Potter's Mills is an old furnace and mill. Near the Old Fort Tavern is Marker, on site of stockade built in 1768 against Indians, placed by Belfont Chapter of Daughters of the American Revolution. Leaving Penn Valley, the road crosses Nittany Mountain. Bald Eagle Mountains may be seen beyond, with Crest of Alleghenies in the background. From Pleasant Gap, a detour may be made to State College, population 2,405. Pennsylvania State College was founded by the United States government. In 1862, Congress passed the Land Grant Act, offering to each state and territory in the Union a gift of public lands, the proceeds from the sales to provide for the maintenance of a college to promote the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in the several pursuits and professions of life. The offer was accepted by the legislature of this state in 1863, and the institution, then known as the Agricultural College of Pennsylvania, designated to receive the land grant. There are 34 buildings on a campus of 1,500 acres. Old Main, built in 1857 as the Agricultural College of Pennsylvania, native limestone, is fine specimen of early architecture. The chemistry and liberal arts buildings are classic style, mining and agricultural groups, Italian Renaissance. The college maintains departments of study in industrial and fine arts, architecture, art history, and engineering. Architectural exhibitions show many specimens of students' work, some of them prize winners in the Beaux Arts contests. The ornamental gateway, a gift of the class of 1916, was designed by the students. College Museum contains, among the portraits, those of the seven presidents of the college, and Governor Beaver, also other paintings, marbles, and metalwork. Art is being emphasized in the summer school. Auditorium, presented by Charles Schwab, Esquire, has in the lobby heroic statue, The Hewer, by George Gray Barnard. Opposite on the campus is the Carnegie Library. Architects, Seymour Davis and Paul A. Davis. Near State College is a picturesque village, Bullsburg, laid out with a small, formal center square from which streets radiate toward the distant mountains. Colonel Theodore Bull, architect, who raised and equipped a machine gun company for the World War, has created a museum for his warfare collections, curious old armor dating back to the Crusaders, and a large amount of World War relics, German airplanes, helmets, gas masks, etc. There is also a Napoleon room, and he has erected a chapel, old Spanish model, which houses rare wall hangings, vestments, church furnishings, and manuscripts in Spanish, dating from the time of Columbus. They were inherited by Mrs. Bull, a direct descendant from Columbus. Colonel Bull also keeps up on his property a reservation or captain's camp for the 28th Division, the Iron Division. Belfont, county seat, population 3,996, was founded 1795 by James Harris and Colonel James Dunlop, who gave the ground for the courthouse and academy, and certain lots to be sold to provide for the erection of said buildings. Name is said to have been suggested by Talleyrand, who visited James Harris at his home, Marlbrook, now the Belfont Poorhouse. Being asked by Mrs. Harris to suggest a name for the town, he said, Belfont for this beautiful spring. The spring is computed to flow 14,600 gallons per minute and scarcely varies, 
entire supply being conveyed to the borough. It is a conservative and aristocratic old town, with residences of Governors Curtin, Beaver, and Hastings, whose homes may still be seen, and fine old colonial doorways. The library of Judge Ellis L. Orvis is noted for its rare first editions, one of the best in Pennsylvania. Courthouses in the public square, built 1805, Greco-colonial with ionic columns, architect probably Ezra Ale, has been twice enlarged without changing the front. Entrance to the east edition harmonizes with the main west front. Architects Newman and Harris, Philadelphia, for enlargement in 1911. Contains portraits of past judges of the county. In the diamond, in front of courthouse, is state memorial to Pennsylvania's war governor and United States ambassador to Russia, Andrew G. Curtin. Bronze, heroic portrait statue on granite pedestal, sculptor W. Clark Noble. On either side are bronze panels giving name of Center County's soldiers in wars of the Republic. The Belfont Academy, founded in 1805, burned 1905, was rebuilt. Classic, architect Robert Cole of Belfont. End of section 33. Section 34 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Beaver County. Formed March 12, 1800, named for one of our most industrious little animals, was in the track of earliest of French and English explorers of the Mississippi Valley, to which the Ohio River Valley forms an integral part. It was the scene of heroic labors of Moravian and Jesuit missionaries, who built their stations on the borders of the Beaver River. The Indian villages were the homes of some of the most noted warriors of the aboriginal tribes, and sites of important treaty conferences between them and the colonial governments of Pennsylvania and Virginia. Chief industries are coal and steel. Yards of the Pennsylvania Railroad at Conway, said to be the largest in the world. The famous glass factories of Rochester and Monaca are at junction of the Ohio and Beaver Rivers. Four bridges are here, including that of the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad, a massive structure of fine engineering skill, 90 feet above the river. Beaver, county seat, Indian Shingo's town, population 4,135, was laid out in 1791 on a high-level plateau overlooking the Ohio River by the surveyor general of the state. Five streets, 100 feet wide, following direction of river, were planned, with five of the same width crossing at right angles, and each square divided again by streets 25 feet in width. Eight squares were reserved for use of the town, one at each corner, north, east, south, and west, and four in the center, which, with a wide strip fronting the river, constitute the parks. All beautifully laid out, they have large trees and are planted with ornamental shrubbery. The present added territory, east and west, makes the town twice the original size. Courthouse, brick with stone trimmings, is on one of the center squares. The jail, a quaint old stone building, faces on opposite square. In center stands the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. At foot of Market Street is a tall flagstaff marking the site of Fort McIntosh, built 1778 by General McIntosh, on earlier site of a French town built in 1754. Beaver Falls, population 12,802, oldest and largest manufacturing town, consequent on the great water power of Beaver River and Falls, has Geneva College and fine Carnegie Library. The residence section is on a bluff 200 feet high and fine view. New Brighton, population 9,361, connected with Beaver Falls by bridges, has the Merrick Art Galleries, acquired by gift to the city, with collection of paintings of merit and value, and liberal endowment for purpose of adding to the collection, library, museum, and to employ teachers in the future. Armory is headquarters of the famous 10th Regiment. Near the town is a ravine through which flows Brady's Run, scene of many thrilling events in life of the famous Indian fighter, Captain Samuel Brady. Morado has a beautiful park on the Beaver River. At Rock Point, on the Conoquinessing Creek, is wild and tumultuous scenery. Legionville, General Anthony Wayne wintered his soldiers here in 1792. The trenches and position of some of the redoubts are still discernible, marked by Flagstaff, erected by the Fort McIntosh chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. Farther east is quaint old town of Economy, home of the Harmony Society, disciples of Dr. Rapp, thrifty, industrious people of the past, almost defaced by the town of Ambridge, of the American Bridge Company, who purchased a large tract of their land. Near Smith's Ferry, on the north bank of the Ohio, is a large group of interesting Indian picture carvings cut into the surface of the Piedmont sandstone, exposed in the river at a three-foot stage of water. They are scattered over the surface of the rock ledge for a space about 40 feet in width and 700 feet in length, and represent a great variety of the forms of men and animals, birds, fish, and reptiles, including the beaver, bear, wolf, turtle, snake, and eagle, human footprints and the tracks of various beasts, as well as inanimate objects 
scalpu, bows, and arrows. There is also a picture of a bison chasing a dog. Another large collection of similar pictures on the Susquehanna River at Safe Harbor, Lancaster County, contains the same forms of the wolf and the turtle, from which well-known tribes of the Delaware Indians were named, which would seem to connect them with that tribe. Casts and photographs of these carvings may be seen at the Carnegie Museum, Pittsburgh. End of section 34. Section 35 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Crawford County. Formed March 20, 1800, named for Colonel William Crawford. First well in the world drilled for petroleum was completed here in 1859. Valley of Oil Creek, south of Titusville, once most productive oil in the United States. Land peculiarly suited to grazing, stock raising, and general farming. French Creek was followed by Washington, 1753, from Franklin, Venango County, to Fort Lebrouf, Erie County. He returned, descending it in canoe. On French Creek, north of Meadville, are Sagerstown and Cambridge Springs, with famous health-giving waters. Conneaut Lake, three and one-half miles by one mile, is largest lake in Pennsylvania, covering about 1,200 acres. Meadville, county seat, population 14,568, settled in 1788 by David Mead. His house still stands on Randolph Street, with modern outer walls. At roots of a maple tree planted by him is granite marker. Inscription. This house, erected May 1797 by General David Meade, founder of Meadville, ensign in the War of American Revolution, Major General, 14th and 15th Division, Pennsylvania Militia, rendered signal service in the War of 1812, and an associate judge at the time of his death, placed by the Colonel Crawford Chapter, D.A.R., 1902. In Diamond Park, center of city, five acres, set in huge granite boulder found there, is bronze tablet, inscription. In commemoration of Colonel William Crawford, born in Virginia, 1732, burned at the stake by Delaware Indians near Sandusky, Ohio, June 11, 1782. Revolutionary soldier, friend, and companion of Washington. Brave and distinguished frontiersman of western Pennsylvania. This county is named in his honor. Erected by Colonel Crawford Chapter, D.A.R., 1912. Also, Pioneer's Monument, erected May 12, 1888, to mark 100th anniversary of Meadville, and the Soldier's Monument, erected 1890. Parrot guns, relics of the Civil War, are at the base. Inscription, Crawford County's tribute to her loyal sons, 1861-1865. Courthouse faces the park, Renaissance, architect E.T. Roberts, built in 1870. On a house west of the park is a tablet, inscription, site of first courthouse and jail north of Pittsburgh, 1804-25 placed by Colonel Crawford Chapter, D.A.R., 1909. Also facing the park are the post office, built by the government, 1910, Georgian architecture, red brick and white marble, and the Unitarian Church, built in 1835, red brick, classic, Doric architecture. On the terrace at Locust Street is a small stone tablet marking an old Indian trail, along which Washington passed to Fort LaBeouf. The terrace, an attractive residence street, is the sloping ground following the old canal. Meadville Free Library contains a complete file of the Crawford Weekly Messenger, published by Thomas Atkinson at Meadville, first newspaper northwest of the Allegheny Mountains. Annual exhibitions of paintings by American artists are held here. An excellent permanent collection is being accumulated by the Art Association. Among the artists represented are Charles C. Curran, Charles Bittinger, and Charlotte B. Komen. Allegheny College, founded in 1815, co-ed, is well equipped as to instructors, apparatus, and buildings. Campus 20 acres, nearly $1 million endowment. Bentley Hall, the oldest building, erected in 1820, is of fine colonial architecture. Library, classic architecture, contains autograph letters from Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Wesley, commissions to Timothy Alden, first president, descended from Longfellow's John Alden, portraits of all the presidents of the college, President Clark by Inman, also Honorable James Winthrop, and of Reverend William Bentley of Salem, Massachusetts, who bequeathed here his library, one of the rarest in the country. The Pennsylvania College of Music, chartered 1887, is complete in its faculty and curriculum for study in every department of music and allied arts. Meadville Theological School, chartered 1846, contains a fine library. In the chapel is a portrait by John Neagle, Philadelphia, painted 1848, of Harm Jan Huidekoper, founder of the school. He was the first representative of the Holland Land Company in Meadville in 1802. Lafayette Hotel is on site of the Gibson Tavern, where Lafayette dined in 1825. A house on Water Street, corner of Steers Alley, is the site of Block House, built 1794, and North Ward School is on site of the State Arsenal, 1816-58. to 58. 
all three marked with tablets by Colonel Crawford Chapter, Daughters, American Revolution. Titusville, chartered as a city in 1866, population 8,432, named for Jonathan Titus, first settler in 1796. Here in 1859, Colonel Edwin L. Drake, by drilling, gave to the world rock oil. First oil well half mile southeast of center of town is marked by a boulder monument with large tablet showing replica of photograph of oil derrick and surrounding trees taken when oil was discovered. Inscription. This native boulder marks the spot where, through the foresight, energy, and perseverance of Edwin L. Drake, the first well was drilled for oil, August 27, 1859. Oil was found at a depth of 69 feet. This great discovery inaugurated the petroleum industry. Erected by the Canadota Chapter, DAR, August 27, 1914. Drake Monument, entrance to Woodlawn Cemetery, emblematic figure of a driller, bronze, heroic size, curving architectural background, granite, sculptor Charles Niehaus, Tomb of Drake faces the monument, Drake Museum west of Titusville, brick, architect Edwin Bell, contains collections of interest relating to early history of the oil industry. Benson Memorial Library, Franklin Street near Main Street, colonial, brick in Indiana limestone, built 1902, architects Jackson and Rosencrantz, New York. St. James Protestant Episcopal Church, built 1863, Gothic, native stone, has fine Tiffany window. Presbyterian Church, built 1887, Romanesque, Medina Sandstone, is on site of Log Church, built in 1815. Stained glass window by the Montague, Passel, London Company of New York. Presbyterian Chapel, 1907, Romanesque, stained glass window by Lamb, New York. The Commercial Bank has a portrait of John L. McKinney, former president, by John L. Johansson. End of section 35. Section 36 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambeau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Erie County. Formed March 12, 1800, named for Lake Erie, the name Erie from a tribe of Indians, Eries, conquered by the Iroquois Confederacy in 1653, their language and identity is lost. Curious mounds and circular embankments, still found in several places, show traces of a race superior to the Indians. Human bones in large quantities have been unearthed on line of the Pennsylvania and Erie Railroad, indicating huge physical development. One was nine feet in height. The triangle north of Pennsylvania and west of New York was purchased by authority of Governor Mifflin in 1791 from the United States to obtain a lake port for the state conveyance being signed by President Washington and Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of State. Afterwards, the Indian title was purchased from the Six Nations through the diplomacy of corn planter, Giantwachia, the Seneca chief, for which the state gave him a reservation in Warren County. Later, the Indians resolved to prevent the settlement of Prescott Isle by Americans, but General Wayne gained a decisive and final victory against them in the Battle of Fallen Timbers on Maumee Road in 1794. The shore belt, for ten miles in width, is noted for grape and fruit raising, back of this is a productive agricultural section. Iron and steel industries predominate. Principal roads are along the south shore of Lake Erie, called the East and West Lake Roads, that form a 50-mile section of the international touring route across the continent. The old French road from Erie southeast to Waterford, 18 miles, was originally part of the stage route between Pittsburgh and Erie, and also the old portage route from Lake Erie, for military and commercial purposes, to the headwaters of the Allegheny River navigation at Fort LaBeouf, Waterford, on Lake LaBeouf. In 1753, Major George Washington, 21 years old, first caught the attention of mankind. He came with a message from Governor Dinwiddie of Virginia to notify the French to discontinue fortifying Prescott Isle and LaBeouf, claiming them to be British territory. Captain Repartie came from Prescott Isle for the conference. Washington was accompanied by Christopher Gist, white, and an Indian interpreter. They were in Fort LaBeouf from December 11th to 16th and treated courteously by the French officers, who stated they would communicate with their superior officer, Marquis Duquesne, but at present must refuse to comply. Erie, county seat, population 93,372, on site of Prescott Isle Fort, built by the Marquis Duquesne in 1753, one of the chain of 13 French forts extending from Quebec to Fort Duquesne, is 35 feet above the lake, 573 feet above sea level. Surveyed by Andrew Ellicott in 1795, first surveyor general of the United States, three public parks of five acres each were in the original plan, along 6th Street one mile apart. Perry Square, 6th and State Streets, on original plan, is focus of public life. It contains memorial monuments to Captain Charles V. Gridley, bronze statue erected in 1913, commander of the flagship of Admiral Dewey's squadron in Manila Bay. Eben Brewer, bronze statue, first American postmaster in Cuba. J. 
General Anthony Wayne, large granite boulder surmounted by two cannon, erected 1902, and bronze statue to Civil War soldiers, erected 1872. Courthouse, facing Perry Square, classic, Corinthian columns, native stone, erected in 1852. The bell is a trophy of war from the British battleship Queen Charlotte in 1813. Courtroom contains complete representation of portraits of Erie County judges. Public Library, South Perry Square, Italian Renaissance, Granite, built in 1897. Architects Alden and Harlow, Pittsburgh, contains portraits of Commodore Perry, General Anthony Wayne, Captain Charles V. Gridley, President Lincoln. In the art gallery is a small permanent collection of works by American artists. Among those represented are Child Hassam, R. M. Schurtleff, F. S. Church, George R. Bars, Arthur Parton, H. Bolton Jones, Charles A. Holbert, and Henry Mosler. Annual art exhibitions are held here by the Erie Art Club. The library also has a museum with relics of the French and Indian, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, and later wars. Erie has a conservatory of music with an organized symphony orchestra and glee club. The old Custom House, State Street, north of Perry Square, built in 1837, classic, brick with white marble steps and Doric columns, was first used as a United States bank, now in possession of the Grand Army of the Republic. Erie has 55 churches, 18 missions, and other religious societies, also two cathedrals. St. Paul's, Protestant Episcopal, West 6th Street, Gothic, Stone, built 1866, architect St. John of Detroit, Rose Window by Tiffany, who also made some of the memorial windows. St. Peter's Roman Catholic, 10th and Sassafras Streets, Gothic. Medina, New York, Red Sandstone, trimmed with white sandstone from Amherst, Ohio, and Mercer County, Pennsylvania, built in 1893. Architect C.C. C. Keeley, New York. Contains statues of St. Peter and St. Paul, Carrera marble, made in Italy. Stations and stained glass windows from Munich, Germany. Other windows made in this country. Memorial windows are also in the First Presbyterian Church, St. Mary's and St. John Canty, Polish. The State Soldiers and Sailors Home and Marine Hospital, built 1867-68, brick and stone, is located on the lakefront. On the grounds is a replica of the original blockhouse fort where General Anthony Wayne died in 1796, after his conquest of the Northwest in 1795. He was buried here until his body was removed in 1809 to St. David's Burial Ground, Radnor. The blockhouse, showing plan of construction, was built in 1880 as memorial to General Wayne. It contains relics and part of coffin lid with his inscription. These grounds were the reservation on Old City Plan of 1795, set apart for fortifications, in the most commanding position, for protection to entrance of harbor. Most of the military history of Erie is interwoven with the location between Parade and Wayne Streets, north of 5th Street. Here was the first white settlement, Prescott Isle Village, and French Fort in 1753. On Bluff near Parade Street, blockhouses were erected, 1753, 1796, and 1813. Parade Street formed part of the old French road to Fort LaBeouf, French Garrison, 1753-59, English, 1760-63, and in 1785, American, 1795-1806, also 1812-13. Here in 1763 took place the hard-fought two days battle of Prescott Isle with Pontiac, chief of the Ottawas, who, with a vast force, simultaneously attacked all 13 forts and captured nine of them, including Prescott Isle and LaBeouf. And again, this was the objective point of the Indians in 1794, when they were finally conquered by General Wayne. Here Thomas Rees, first Justice of Peace, entertained in his tent at the mouth of Mill Creek, a French exile, the Duke of Chartres, subsequently Louis-Philippe, King of France. At the foot of Peach and of Cascade Streets, granite blocks with brass markers, note approximate positions where Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry's ships were built, on which he won the victory of the Battle of Lake Erie in 1813. The powder used to fight that battle was made at DuPont's, Wilmington, Delaware, and brought through Pennsylvania in Conestoga wagons. The second flagship of his fleet, the Niagara, is in Erie Harbor, having been raised from the sand of Misery Bay, where it lay for nearly a century. It was rebuilt by the state at a cost of $75,000 for the Perry Centennial in 1913. The first flagship, Lawrence, was raised and rebuilt for the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia in 1876. Also in Erie Harbor is the United States warship Michigan, now named Wolverine and used as a naval militia training ship. Built in 1844, it was the first iron warship and brought to Erie in sections from Pittsburgh. The original engine is still intact and seaworthy, now oldest ironclad vessel in the world. At foot of French Street, Commodore Perry's fleet landed with the captured British squadron. The place was camping ground of the Pennsylvania militia. In War of 1812-13, the British fleet was drawn up in front of the harbor to destroy Perry's vessels while under construction. Captain Daniel Dobbins of Erie, commander of the Ohio, was the guiding spirit in building the fleet. 2,500 soldiers encamped here, with cannon mounted, 
and such military preparedness as to forebode disaster to an enemy attempting entrance to the harbor. General Lafayette visited Erie in 1825, and a banquet was given him. The Prescott Isle Peninsula, surrounding Erie Harbor, has a state park of more than 1,500 acres, which is free to all. It gives Erie a large and thoroughly protected harbor. 100 acres were reserved for United States fortifications and dockyards. A life-saving station here, established in 1876, is place of interest. Prescott Isle Bay is the finest natural harbor on the Great Lakes, four and one-half miles long, one and one-half miles wide. Lakeside Park, an irregular and sloping strip of land along the waterfront, from Mill Creek on east to City Line West, 65 acres, was laid out in 1888 by John L. Culley, landscape engineer. Other open spaces are the Waterworks Park, the Reservoir, Erie, Trinity, and Lakeside Cemeteries. Present city planner is John Nolan of Massachusetts. Erie has also 20 smaller parks. Of these, the largest are Glenwood, between Sassafras and Cherry Streets, purchased by Erie Public Park Association in 1903, 114 acres, a natural forest with large stream of clear water and swimming pool. The Fish Hatchery, 23rd and Sassafras Streets, one of the most important in the state. Waldemere, four miles west on Lake Erie, and the State Normal School Grounds at Edinburgh, 16 miles south of Erie. End of section 36. Section 37 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Venango County. Formed March 12, 1800, territory then recently acquired by treaties from the Indians, named from Inangae, a rude figure cut in a tree, Seneca language. A well-watered country, the Allegheny River meandering through rugged hills, about 400 feet high, presents places of rare scenic grandeur. Into it flow several streams of considerable volume, among them Oil Creek, French Creek, and Big Sandy. For a number of years after the discovery of petroleum, in 1859, it continued to be the principal oil-producing field. Now chief industries are manufacturing, refining of petroleum, lumbering, and agriculture. Franklin, county seat, population 9,970, named for Benjamin Franklin, was laid out by William Irvine and Andrew Ellicott, state commissioners, in 1795, on a plateau where a few Seneca Indians were living in comparative security, with a lookout on the highest point of the highest hill, giving views up and down the two beautiful rivers. Being a conservative town, the original city plan has been closely followed. Descendants of the early white settlers are living on their own lands from original surveys. Courthouse, Renaissance, brick, in center of a fine, wide park, contains portrait of John Morrison, first town crier. Nearby is Soldier's Monument, marble shaft surmounted by an eagle. On the pedestal are carved names of Venango County soldiers killed in the Civil War. Opposite is the Franklin News Office, Renaissance, good modern construction. St. John's Protestant Episcopal Church has fine Tiffany windows. The Presbyterian, Baptist, and Roman Catholic churches all have good architecture and stained glass windows. Fine armory building. Original lock and dam are preserved intact in an early canal extended to Franklin from the feeder canal several miles below Meadville on French Creek. Its course is plainly seen at many places along the creek. Five old bridges that were swept away by fire and ice have been replaced by modern structures. One is called the Washington, concrete, handsome design. Three early frontier forts were here, sites marked by monuments and tablets. Fort Machaut, French, Elk Street near 6th Street, 1753-59. Washington came here on way to Fort LaBeouf, 1753. This fort had a share in the maneuvers that precipitated the Great Seven Years' War and dissipated the dreams of an extended French empire. The expedition which brought on actual hostilities was organized and received its impetus at Fort Michaud. French troops passed through and often a thousand Indians lingered here. Fort Venango, Elk Street at 8th Street, English, 1760-63, captured and burned by the Indians during Pontiac's War, and Fort Franklin on Franklin Avenue west of 13th Street, built by United States 1787-96, to later abandoned. Also, the old garrison on Bank of French Creek near junction with Allegheny River, erected by the United States after Fort Franklin. This city has never failed in a military crisis. During the War of 1848, George C. McClellan led the Forlorn Hope, which captured the fortified buildings at Chapultepec, making the takings of the palace possible. Six miles down the river is Indian God Rock, on which are still seen Indian picture writings. Near this rock, Celeron, a Frenchman, under orders from the governor of Canada, is said to have buried one of the engraved leaden plates, placed at various points from Lake Erie to the Mississippi River, as marks of renewal of French possession. Opposite is a bald mountain, from which are fine views of river scenery. Among the hills are numerous caves and ravines. A lovely ravine is Glen Fern, south of Franklin. Monarch Park, halfway to Oil City, is a well-equipped pleasure ground. 
Oil City on Oil Creek, population 21,274, so named because it was the center of the oil industry after discovery of petroleum in 1859. In early days, Seneca oil was obtained from the Indians, who gathered it by spreading their blankets in Oil Creek, the surface of which was covered with oil. Hassan Park, with 40 acres of natural wooded area, has rustic stone, arch gateway at Bissell Avenue entrance. In Christ Protestant Episcopal Church are memorial windows by Lamb, New York. United States Post Office at the corner of Seneca and Clifford Streets, built by the government in 1906, Romanesque, gray brick, and stone. Carnegie Library, built 1904, modified Romanesque, gray brick, and stone. Architect Charles D. Bolin, Philadelphia. Five bridges over the Allegheny River include the original suspension bridge and the petroleum, said to be finest in strength and dimension north of Pittsburgh. In 1892, a large petroleum tank caught fire and burning oil spread over the water in the creek. It also set fire to the buildings, and many lives were lost. From Franklin and Oil City, public highways, now under state control, led along streams and over uplands of great beauty. End of section 37. Section 38 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Warren County. Formed March 12, 1800. Named for General Joseph Warren, who fell at the Battle of Bunker Hill in 1775. Land is varied, with mountains, plains, and narrow valleys. The Allegheny River flows through, with tributaries large enough for floating rafts or propelling machinery. The beautiful Kinzu Hills, east, are nearly 2,200 feet above tidewater. Over them is the famous Kinzu Viaduct, said to be the highest in the world. Early industries were lumber and oil, now they are chiefly agriculture and manufacturing. Warren, made county seat in 1819, was first laid out by General William Irving and Andrew Elliott, state commissioners in 1795. Population, 14,272. In 1800, first sawmill in the county was started, which is said to have made the first raft of lumber ever floated down the Allegheny. It also sawed lumber in 1805 for Jackson's Tavern, in which George W. Fenton, afterwards governor of New York, in 1806, taught school, until the schoolhouse of round logs with openings covered by oiled paper for windows was ready. Courthouse, built 1825, was first brick building in the county. A suspension bridge crosses the Allegheny here, built about 1871. Near entrance to bridge is the Soldier's Monument, granite, erected in 1909, on which are inscribed the battles of Warren County men in Civil War. Bronze Monument to General Warren and his soldiers is in the West Park, dedicated 1910, placed by the Joseph Warren Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. Memorial Library, Classic, Doric. Architect, Wetmore, New York, is on site of residence of Francis Henry, Esquire. Tidiute, population 1065, in midst of most picturesque surroundings, hills 500 to 700 feet high, covered thickly with forests, where the Allegheny River makes a beautiful curve crossed here by a suspension bridge built between 1860 and 70, was famous as an oil-producing community and the center of a large and excited population, now a quiet residence of wealth and refinement. Also on Bakes of the Allegheny is the Corn Planter Reservation, given to the great Seneca chief and his heirs forever, as a reward for military service and influence during the War of 1812. In 1866, the state legislature authorized the erection of a monument here. Inscription, Giantwahia, the Corn Planter, died at Corn Planter Town, February 18, 1836, aged about 100 years. End of section 38. Section 39 of A History of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Butler County. Formed March 12, 1800, named in honor of General Richard Butler, born in York County. Natural scenery is varied with hills, knolls, and ridges, intervening valleys, and broad fertile fields, while many streams dash over rocky bottoms in all directions and flash their clear waters in the sunlight. The county is rich in old traditions. In 1753, Washington passed through over the Indian Trail, extending from site of Pittsburgh to Franklin, Venango County. Lafayette stopped here overnight, and many stories of hairbreadth escapes from Indians are related among them that of Massey Harbison and her baby, who after seeing two of her children killed and scalped almost starved for days but finally escaped. The descendants of that baby still reside in the county. Robert Morris owned about 100,000 acres of land in this region. Chief Industries, notably its large output of oil and gas, also manufactories, the Standard Steel Car Works, one of the largest plants in the United States, and the Standard Plate Glass Works. Butler, county seat, population 23,778, 
laid out in 1803, rectangular, sheltered on all sides by hills. On the top of a small knoll is the public square, with fountain, walks, grass plots, and flower beds. It contains the Soldiers' Monument, dedicated in 1894 to our silent defenders. Facing the park is the courthouse, Gothic French style, with a high tower, stone, built in 1885. Architect James P. Bailey, Pittsburgh. Remodeled in 1908 by J.C. Fulton of Uniontown. Interior has mural paintings representing historic scenes in Butler County. The Women's Club furnished a restroom for women here in the basement. Two interurban street railway lines from Pittsburgh have their terminus near this point. Within two squares is the post office, built 1914, Grecian. Light brick with granite ionic columns. Architect Oscar Wenderoth. Opposite is St. Paul's Roman Catholic Church, English Gothic, with stone tower 180 feet high. Constructed of beautifully colored local sandstone in the rough, trimmed with the same stone dress smooth. Roof, variegated shingle tile. Architect John T. Cumbs, Pittsburgh. Interior has mural decorations by the Christian Art Guild. The altars are known as triptych, and said to be the only ones of their kind in America. The sanctuary is considered among the richest and most complete in this country. Stained glass windows from George Boos, Munich, Bavaria. St. Peter's German Catholic Church has stained glass windows from Munich, made by Meyer and Company, who also made windows for St. Peter's Protestant Episcopal Church. The county has numerous fine concrete bridges. Butler Viaduct is the largest, 1,060 feet between the approaches connecting East Wayne Street with Center Avenue across a deep ravine, built in 1915 by the Fort Pitt Bridge Works. Two miles northeast of town is a pleasure park of natural beauty and a wooded valley, well-equipped with dining rooms, ball grounds, lake for boating, etc. Five miles from Butler on the heights above Herman Station is St. Mary's Monastery, Gothic, built by the Capuchin Fathers, of which St. Fidelis College forms a part. Saxonburg was laid out in 1832 by John Roebling. Here he lived and manufactured the first wire cable, which he used in constructing suspension bridges that made him famous, notably the Brooklyn Bridge across East River, New York. At Evans City, on a grassy knoll in the cemetery, is the Soldiers' Monument, Quincy granite shaft surmounted by an eagle standing on a globe. The names of 45 soldiers are inscribed on it, dedicated 1894. On the same road is Harmony, an old historic settlement founded by George Rapp of Germany, who organized a society known as Harmonites. They purchased 5,000 acres of best farmland along the Conequinessing Creek, amid beautiful scenery, and formed a communistic colony. All money and goods went into a common fund. All worked together in harmony and concord. The quaint old cemetery is surrounded by a wall four feet thick. At the entrance is a gate consisting of one large stone which turns on a pivot. More than 100 of the sect are buried here. High up on the bank above the creek is a curious stone formation called Rapp's Seat. Here, tradition relates, Father Rapp used to sit and oversee the work carried on by the community. The tourist is well repaid for the climb by the beautiful view from the high point. Another historic place is known as the Old Stone House on Mercer Turnpike, ten miles north of Butler, used as a tavern in the 18th century. Here, in 1843, an Indian named Mohawk killed Mrs. Wigton and her four children. A state normal school with fine large buildings and wide shady campus is at Slippery Rock. About 1792, numerous depredations by Indians were quieted for some time by General Broadhead's expedition to the headwaters of the Allegheny River with Captain Samuel Brady's help, a notable Indian fighter. His leap of 23 feet over the waters at Slippery Rock, 20 feet deep, with Indians back in front, gained the praise of the Indian chief, who said, Blady make good jump. At West Sunbury, an agricultural school has lately been established. End of section 39. Section 40 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Mercer County. Formed March 12, 1800. Named for General Hugh Mercer of the Revolutionary War, who was killed in the Battle of Princeton. Rolling land, well watered with springs and creeks. Coal underlying one-fourth of land in the county. Chief industries are iron, steel, and agriculture. Early settlers were Scotch-Irish. In 1812, Mercer County people were frequently called upon to aid in defense of Erie. The whole county would be aroused in a day by runners. In a few hours, most of the men, whether militia or volunteers, would be on the march. One call came on Sunday, while service was being held in the courthouse. The sermon was suspended, news announced, benediction given, and immediate preparation for march commenced. At another time, news of threatened invasion came in the middle of grain harvest. The response was immediate. Only one old man was left in the town. Mercer, county seat, population 1,932, was once an Indian village of 70 lodges. No settlement was made here until after Wayne's victory over the Indians in 1795. It was laid out in 1803 on 200 acres of land given by John Hoge of Washington County. The courthouse, built 1909, colonial, brick, stone, and concrete. 
is in center of the public square of three acres, interior finished in white marble. Mural painting in dome by Edward Everett Simmons represents power, innocence, guilt, and justice. In the courtrooms, on second floor, are symbolic mural paintings, Criminal Law by Vincent Adorente, and Civil Law by Arthur Foringer, made in 1911, panels 11 by 12 feet. In the judge's chambers is a portrait of Honorable Henry Baldwin, former member of the Mercer County Bar, and Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, 1830-44. to On courthouse grounds is the monument, granite and bronze, to soldiers of Mercer County in the War of 1861-65. to The Humes Hotel, at the northeast corner of the public square, built 1817, then known as the Hackney House, oldest hostelry in the county, had as guests Marquis de Lafayette in 1824. His room, number 12, is open to guests. President Taylor and Buchanan and General John B. Gordon of Georgia also visited here. The celebrated Harthagig Healing Springs, named after an Indian chief, is near Mercer. Indians claimed it healed them of many diseases. Hope Mills was the birthplace and early home of George Junkin, D.D., who was father-in-law of General Stonewall Jackson. His father was a captain in the War of 1812. Grove City is a picturesque college town, being the home of Grove City College, founded by Dr. Isaac C. Kettler. Buell Farm near Sharon is a recreation park for citizens of Shenango Valley and has clubhouse, swimming pool, golf, tennis, and baseball grounds. End of section 40. Section 41 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Armstrong County. Formed March 12, 1800, and named for General John Armstrong, who commanded the expedition against the Indians at Catanning in 1756, and destroyed their town. A hilly and well-watered region with fine farming lands on bottoms and hills. Bituminous coal and limestone are found in all parts of the county. Cannel coal of excellent quality, oil, gas, and iron ore. The plate glass industry at Ford City is said to be the largest in the world. Historic places are Site of Fort Jacob, Battle of Blanket Hill, and Point where Washington and Gist crossed the river, not marked. Catanning, county seat, settled in 1804, population 7,153, on site of an Indian village of the same name. Later, it was one of the French and Indian forts, extending via Venango and Fort LaBeouf to Erie. An Indian trail left Horseshoe Bend at Catanning Point, Blair County, and came through Cambria County to Cherry Tree, Canoe Point, Indiana County, crossing from there to Catanning. The courthouse, jail, and sheriff's house are built together, a fine-cut stone from Catfish Quarry, Clarion County, cupola 108 feet from the ground, foundation 7 feet wide, sunk in solid rock 24 feet below the surface. Architect James McCullough, Jr., Catanning, built 1870-73. to At Mahoning in 1780 was a fierce encounter with the Indians by General Broadhead, commander of Fort Pitt, and Captain Samuel Brady, and another encounter at Brady's Bend. Captain Brady fought in the Revolution at Siege of Boston in the massacre at Powley, and in 1779 was ordered to Fort Pitt. Ford City, population 5,605, has statue of Colonel J.B. Ford, father of plate glass industry. Several fine churches are here. End of section 41. Section 42 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Indiana County. Formed March 30, 1803. Named for Indians, early settlers, mostly Scotch-Irish, who not only had the Indians to contend with, but also venomous reptiles and beasts of prey, with which the county abounded. Near the cabin door one would hear the quick snap of the vice-like jaws of the wolf, one could see the panther crouching in a tree, or the catamount glaring from a thicket. Chief industry is agriculture and coal mining. Entire county is underlaid with bituminous coal of finest quality. Glass and brick-making are important. Electricity and natural gas solve the heating and lighting problems. Indiana, county seat, laid out in 1805. Population, 7,043. Courthouse and center of town, brick and gray stone. Renaissance, built 1871. Jail in same style, joins it, built 1888. Town Hall, brick with Cleveland limestone trimmings. Renaissance, built 1913. Architect H. King Conklin, Newark, New Jersey. Savings and Trust Company, white brick, Renaissance. Presbyterian Church, semi-Gothic, Hummel Stone, has fine windows, one by Dodge, New York, formerly with Tiffany. United Presbyterian Church, Moorish, brick, built 1851. State Normal School, northeast of town on high ground, beautifully kept. Buildings all of stone or brick. Modern school construction contains good reproductions of famous paintings and replicas of celebrated sculpture. 
distributed throughout the buildings as a decorative and educational element. Portrait of Jane E. Leonard, principal since opening in 1875. Artist H. S. Stevenson, Pittsburgh, was given by the alumni. And interest in class windows in Leonard Hall, given by three separate graduate classes. Makers, Rudy Brothers, Pittsburgh. Near the borough is Devil's Elbow, one of nature's beauty spots. Armstrong Spring, an old Indian camping ground on Indian Trail, Catanning Path, which passed north of the Rice Hill, west to the spring, in private property, and through normal school grounds to Catanning, Armstrong County. Over this trail, Lieutenant Colonel John Armstrong was sent with seven companies against Indians at the Battle of Blanket Hill, Catanning, in 1756. Two miles west on Catanning Pike is site of Clark's Blockhouse, first building in the county. The spring and part of Old Stone Fort are still there, not marked. Cherry Tree, on Susquehanna River, prominent point on Old Purchase Line, in Treaty of William Penn with the Indians at Fort Stanwix, 1768, also called Canoe Point. From here, the Indians carried their canoes to the Allegheny River at Catanning, 60 miles away. A direct line between these two points formed part of the boundary of lands acquired from the Six Nations. Where original Cherry Tree stood is the meeting point of Indiana, Cambria, and Clearfield Counties, monument erected by county commissioners. Designed by E.F. Carr and Company, Quincy, Massachusetts, unveiled 1894. Governor Beaver made the address. Inscription, This monument is erected to mark Canoe Place, the corner of the proprietaries purchased from the Indians by treaty at Fort Stanwix, New York, November 5, 1768. In the southeast is a tunnel, part of Old Portage Railroad through Spur of Alleghenies, where the Connemaw makes a bend of two and one-half miles. Near are Aurora Falls, for 60 feet over rock and through a picturesque gorge to the Connemaw River, Kiskimenetis, which forms southern boundary. Tributary streams fall 20 to 30 feet to the mile. Near Armagh is the old Buena Vista Furnace, one of three operated in southeast section in the early 40s, relic of the early iron industry when ore was taken from the hills, melted into pig metal, and transported to the markets over the old Pennsylvania Canal. Blairsville, on proposed William Penn Highway, settled 1819, population 4,391, named for John Blair of Blair's Gap. First United Presbyterian Church, Tudor Gothic. Luzerne is said to have largest electrically equipped coal, bituminous, operations in the world, and develops power to other operations within a radius of 25 miles. Salzburg, settled in 1817 by Andrew Boggs, is near site of an Indian village. Beautiful Kiski Falls are here. Several wells producing salt of excellent quality were put down from 1813 and later. Elders Ridge Academy, Stone, built in 1816, was the first state vocational school in Pennsylvania. The Underground Railway was an active operation in Indiana County during the latter days of slavery. End of section 42. Section 43 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Cambria County. Formed March 26, 1804. Named by early Welsh settlers for the Cambria Hills in Wales. Has been called the Switzerland of America. Here are many places of historic and scenic interest. The old Catanning Trail crossed the country in the north through Asheville, where there is an Indian burial ground. Near Carrollton is Hart's sleeping place. He was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. The British made special exertion to take him a prisoner, so he wandered through the woods, sleeping in caves, being constantly hunted by the enemy. South is Loretto, a quaint old mountain town with one street, and an almost entirely Roman Catholic community, founded by Prince Demetrius Galitzin, who brought a colony of settlers in the Allegheny Mountains about 1796, and labored as a missionary in this district for 40 years. He died in 1840. The church he built here has been rebuilt in a costly manner by Charles Schwab in honor of his birthplace. St. Francis College has the tomb and monument of Prince Galitzin in grounds. Southeast is Galitzin at western end of a tunnel two-thirds of a mile long on the Pennsylvania Railroad, 2,160 feet above sea. A bronze statue of the prince is here. Prince Galitzin Spring, with a monument nearby, is along the state highway near Summit on top of the Alleghenies. Beyond is Crescent, a noted and beautiful summer resort. Here is Mount Aloysius Academy and the State Tuberculosis Sanatorium, number two. Ebensburg, county seat, laid out in 1805, population 2,179, is also a summer resort. Through the woods and around the lakes of this region, the rhododendrons grow as tall as trees and are gorgeous in their bloom. Descending along the upper waters of the Connemaw, numerous vestiges are seen of the old Portage Railroad, a series of inclined plains connecting the State Canal at Hollidaysburg east and Johnstown on the west. Dickens wrote of the scenery along the canal, sometimes the way wound through some lonely gorge like a mountain pass in Scotland. Many dams, which are really lakes, have been built by manufacturers, the largest is three and one-half miles long, 
surrounded by wooded hills with here and there a waterfall. Johnstown, population 67,327, at confluence of the Connemaw River and Stony Creek, was founded in 1800 by a Swiss Mennonite, Joseph Shantz, Johns. A glance at the deep, narrow valleys with their high enclosing walls goes far to explain the possibility of so tremendous a catastrophe as that which overwhelmed Johnstown on May 31, 1889. Connemaw Lake, two and one-half miles long, one and one-half miles wide, was reserved as a fishing ground by a club of Pittsburgh engineers. Its waters were restrained by a dam 1,000 feet long, built by the state as a reservoir to store water for the state canal during the dry seasons. A continuance of violent rains filled the lake to overflowing. The break occurred at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, a gap of 300 feet being formed at once. The water that burst through swept down the valley in a mass one-half mile wide, 40 feet high, carrying everything in its way, completely destroying Johnstown and other towns and villages in its track, going 18 miles in seven minutes, the distance between Johnstown and the lake. The mass of houses, trees, machinery, railway iron, and human bodies was checked by the railway bridge below Johnstown, which soon caught fire, probably burning to death hundreds of persons imprisoned in the wreckage. About 2,205 lives were lost. In the Grandview Cemetery, a large space is dedicated to the unidentified dead, with a westerly granite monument, having heroic-sized statues of faith, hope, and charity. Sculptor F. Barnicote, Quincy, Massachusetts. There are 778 individual markers for the bodies, largely unidentified, laid out geometrically, so that from whatever angle the plot is seen, they are in curved rows. Johnstown was an important shipping station on the canal connecting Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. An interesting feature now remaining is the canal tunnel at the bend of the Connemaw, four miles east of Johnstown, second such tunnel built in America, constructed by the state about 1828 or 1830. The first is in Lebanon County, made in 1827. The Carnegie Library, received by bequest from James M. Swank, historian and iron and steel statistician, his books and historical relics. Franklin Street Methodist Episcopal Church, Gothic, gray sandstone. The sills under the windows of the auditorium are dressed stones from the abandoned Pennsylvania Canal Locks, near site of the present Pennsylvania Railroad Station. Architect George Fritz. First Presbyterian Church at the corner of Walnut and Lincoln Streets, dedicated 1913. Modified English Gothic, Cleveland gray sandstone and green tile. Architects, Badgley and Nicholas, Cleveland. The Cambria Steel Company began in 1840 when George S. King and David Stewart discovered a vein of iron ore about 15 inches thick on the Laurel Run, west of Johnstown. They built the first blast furnace in Cambria County in 1842, calling it the Cambria Furnace. In 1843, Dr. Peter Schoenberger brought out David Stewart's interest. He was the great iron master of his time, conducting a chain of furnaces, forges, and rolling mills, stretching almost 500 miles from the old Marietta Furnace in Lancaster to the Wheeling, West Virginia Ironworks. The Cambria Ironworks were completed in 1853 and sold to a syndicate of Philadelphians, who selected Matthew Newkirk as president. In 1854, they rolled the first iron rails. The first steel rails in America were rolled here in 1867 from blooms imported from England. Iron is the county's chief industry. End of section 43. Section 44 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Clearfield County. Formed March 26, 1804, named by the first settlers from a cleared field in the forest made by the Indians, site of Chingle Klamuch's old town, said to have been the most considerable Indian village on the upper west branch of the Susquehanna, now Clearfield Borough. The whole county is a continuous prospect of intensely picturesque scenery, surface mountainous, with ranges broken into innumerable irregular spurs indented by streams. From many hilltops, views of the greater part of the county may be seen. The Knobs, its loftiest summit, is constantly in view, and the intermediate country, a panorama of natural beauty, ever-changing in atmospheric effects. All the creeks, tributaries of the west branch of the Susquehanna, have scenery which beggars description, a veritable feast for the painter, poet, and romancer. Moshannon and Clearfield Creeks had their beaver dams. Up Anderson's Creek, on the old Milesburg and LaBeouf Road, open prior to 1802, a detachment of regulars marched against the British at Lake Erie in the War of 1812. Important Indian trails traversed this country, crossing the headwaters of Clearfield Creek, Chest Creek, near Hart's Sleeping Place, and the West Branch at Canoe Place. Another ran from Bald Eagle Creek, where Marsh Creek empties, in Blair County, going west across Moshannon and Clearfield Creeks to Chingle Clamouche. This was also called the Trader's Path. None of the present roads are made upon the Indian trails. A mortar-shaped stone has been located about five miles east of Clearfield on the state highway, and has been marked by local daughters of the American Revolution as site of an Indian mill for grinding corn. 
early settlers were mostly from older eastern counties. These were followed by Germans, Irish, Scotch-Irish, and French. Chief industry, the mining of bituminous coal. In 1828, Peter Carthus arrived in Harrisburg with six arcs laden with bituminous coal from his mines in this county. It was exhibited in front of the capital. Not until about 1870 did the industry begin to assume any great magnitude. Today, the yearly output aggregates millions of tons, and the lower measures are not yet developed. Peter Carthus also started the iron industry, near Carthus, but it was short-lived. Here, it is said, the first successful attempt was made in Pennsylvania to smelt iron by means of bituminous coal. Other important industries are vitrified brick, drain tile, and tanning. Clearfield, county seat, population 8,529, on land owned by Abraham Whitmer, laid out 1805 in regular squares like Philadelphia. Streets running east and west are named, those north and south, numbered. Two small parks were reserved along the west branch. Principal buildings are scattered. Courthouse, brick, Romanesque, built in 1860. Architects, Cleveland and Bacchus. Contains portraits of former judges, among them Honorable John Holden Orvis. It is located in center of the original plan of the borough. Near are most of the churches, of which the Trinity Methodist Episcopal, Romanesque, and St. Francis's Roman Catholic, Gothic, may be mentioned for architecture. The high school is well-lighted and of best school construction. Each of the principal towns of this county has its high school. Prominent men of Clearfield were Honorable William Bigler, State Governor, and Honorable William A. Wallace, United States Senator. They are buried in Hillcrest Cemetery. A monument to Governor Bigler was erected by the state. End of section 44. Section 45 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Tioga County. Formed March 26, 1804. Name, corruption of the Iroquois word, Tiagoa, gateway. Noted for its high altitude and wonderful views. Part of Allegheny Plateau, where it breaks into parallel flat-topped mountains, supporting, in shallow basins, several isolated bituminous coal fields. Heritage of timber is being dissipated. The state tree nursery at Asaf is trying to replace the Great Waste. Chief industry, agriculture. Land for dairy purposes is among finest in the state. Several extensive milk condensaries. Indian trails cross the county from Big Tree on the Genesee, among the Senegas, to the frontier at Northumberland. First Great Road was built by Charles Williamson of New York in 1792, agent for Sir William Pulteney, who had received a large grant of land in New York State, adjoining Pennsylvania, in the Genesee country, home of the Seneca Indians. The road, commencing at Loyal Sock, passed through what is now Williamsport, up like Homing Creek to Trout Run, over Laurel Hill to Blockhouse, now Liberty. Here Williamson built a blockhouse of logs, 20 by 40 feet, as place of refuge, to Peter's Camp, now Blossburg, where coal was discovered in 1792. Ending near Bath, New York, it opened up to settlers 15 million acres of land in Pennsylvania, north of Williamsport. This road is still used from Williamsport to Tioga County. County seat, Wellsboro. Population, 3,452. Named for William Hill Wells, United States Senator, 1799-1814. Laid out March 21, 1806, in primeval wilderness. Courthouse, center of group of county buildings facing the public green. Colonial with cupola, built in 1835. Native sandstone and conglomerate, which was hauled on ox sleds for several miles over poor roads. High on the southwest wall is carved the outline of an eagle, insignia of one of the stone cutters from the neighboring Welsh settlement. Opposite, across the green, is the brick office of the Bingham Estate, built in 1855, and still occupied by the agent, patent of one million acres. Land mostly in northern tier, included site of Binghamton, New York. William Bingham, lived 1751 to 1804, was a Philadelphia merchant, member of Continental Congress, and of the United States Senate. Facing the courthouse is a soldier's monument to Civil War heroes, dedicated 1886. Also on the green is a monument to the late John McGee, who developed the coal fields and railroads of the county. A colossal portrait bust on polished granite pedestal. Sculptor Samuel Conkey, New York. Best modern buildings are the Presbyterian Church, Gothic, Ohio Sandstone, erected in 1894. Architects Culver and Hudson, Williamsport. Contains, among memorial windows, one to George Dwight Smith, killed in the Battle of Smith Mountain. Also Tiffany Tablet to Mrs. A.C. Shaw, white marble framed in mosaic of Favreau glass. St. Paul's Protestant Episcopal Church, fronting the green, is a choice example of Norman Romanesque, the last ecclesiastical work of the late Halsey Wood, New York, built in 1897, native sandstone. Windows furnished by Tiffany are quiet and pleasing in tone, 
of unusual harmony with the masonry. Pulpit and altar are also from the Tiffany Studios. The church contains many fine memorials. St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church was remodeled from the old academy, locally an important and historic institution. Standing on a hill, the church raises aloft a gilded cross, impressive and beautiful above the surrounding foliage. The broad main street is paved with brick, around a central strip of green grass, and shaded with fine old elms and maples. The Wellsboro Cemetery, purchased in 1855, was laid out by B.F. Hathaway, landscape gardener of Flushing, Long Island. Stone Arch Gateway, Romanesque of local conglomerate, is memorial to Honorable Henry Warren Williams, Justice of Supreme Court, buried here. Architect J.H. Considine, Elmira. On summit of the knoll is the grave of George W. Sears, poet of outdoor life and wood lore. Monument has bas-relief bronze portrait, set in granite. Honorable John J. Mitchell, judge of Pennsylvania Supreme Court and United States Senator, is also buried here. Woodland Park, 26 acres, is owned by Leonard Harrison, Esquire, who generously maintains it for public use, has surface of hill and dell, stretches of natural forest, and fine views from its higher outlooks. Several citizens have grounds formally laid out and planted under professional advice. Of these, designed by Bryant Fleming, of Townsend and Fleming, Buffalo, is Chester Place, left to the borough by bequest for a public library. The garden has an Italian roofed pergola ending with a marble bust and seats on top of the terrace which divides the upper and lower gardens. A sundial fastened to an old Spanish Renaissance capital, which came from the collection of garden marbles made by the late Stanford White, is on a regular plot of green and forms the center of one garden room, surrounded by a brick walk, in turn framed by a broad border of shrubbery. Into the brick pavement are set little marble panels, carved with designs of roses, birds, etc. Other insets contain quotations appropriate to gardens. Set into the wall outside at right and left at entrance are tiles with trees and bas-relief. Inside, correspondingly placed, are reliefs showing old Italian garden decorations, Socrates and Hercules. Just outside of Wellsboro is an old covered wooden bridge in Pine Creek Gorge, through which the Tyodotton, River of Pines, runs. Mountains rise perpendicularly on either side for 1,000 feet. The gorge is 16 miles long, filled with trout stream tributaries, where also bear, deer, and other game abound. In Mansfield is a state normal school on beautifully terraced hill, five buildings, brick with marble or brownstone and terracotta trimmings, built 1889 to 1909, later buildings modified classic, contains many fine carbon prints of famous paintings and buildings, also plaster replicas of noted pieces of sculpture, Carnegie Free Library, classic architecture, built 1912, light pressed brick, Architects for School and Library, Pearson Bickford, Elmira, New York. End of section 45. Section 46 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, McKean County. Formed March 26, 1804 named for Thomas McKean, second governor of Pennsylvania, mean altitude 1,700 feet. Mount Jewett is one of the high points in the state. Half a mile from Mount Jewett is the Great Kinzu Viaduct on the Erie Railroad, said to be the highest bridge in the state across a ravine. The electric line to Olean, New York, 18 miles through Red Rock, reveals great scenic grandeur. Chief industry, producing and refining petroleum. Smithport, county seat, was incorporated in 1807, population 1,568. In the courthouse grounds is a granite monument to the Civil War soldiers of this county. It was shown in the Centennial Exposition, Philadelphia. St. Luke's Protestant Episcopal Church, a gift from Honorable Henry Hamblin, consecrated 1892, is pure 14th century English Gothic. Architect Halsey Wood. Altar and rare dose of cane stone, surmounted by a very beautiful, delicately carved canopy. Memorial font, cane stone. All memorials were designed by the architect. Organ from Johnson & Sons, Westfield, Massachusetts. In the public school grounds is a tablet marking the route of General Broadhead's expedition. On the highway near Lafayette is a tablet marking place where General Broadhead passed across the county from Allegheny River when he came from Pittsburgh against the Indians, placed by Smithport Daughters of the American Revolution. Bradford, chief city, population 15,525, is said to contain the only plant in America for the manufacture of oxalic acid. It produces 10,000 pounds daily. The city hall, post office, and Carnegie Library are fine buildings. The McKean County Historical Society has rooms in the Carnegie Library. Among their collections are valuable historical papers and autographs, photographs, and samples of products relating to the oil industry, portraits of distinguished Pennsylvanians, and busts of General Kane and of Abraham Lincoln. The latter, by Theophilus Mills, 
is said to be one of the only two living masks ever made of Lincoln. It was made six weeks before the assassination, and after many years it was purchased from the son of the sculptor by Mr. R.B. Stone and placed in the Bradford Library. The museum and art gallery, owned by Louis Emery Jr., Esquire, is at times open to the public. On the public square is a boulder, in honor of Governor McKean, from a tract of land in Annan Township, deeded to Thomas McKean by John Bull, a patriot of the Revolution. A tablet commemorating the Spanish War soldiers was erected by Spanish War veterans. Kane, a beautiful mountain resort, has Evergreen Park, a native forest, given to the town by the Erie Railroad, through their agent, General Thomas L. Kane. A path through the forest is named for General Grant, who frequently enjoyed trout fishing here with General Kane. Facing this park is the high school, classic style, Architects Davis and Davis, Philadelphia. Contains good collection of photographic reproductions of famous paintings and architecture. The Presbyterian Church is a memorial to General Kane, commander of the Bucktail Regiment, erected by his family. At Lewis Run, the great Indian hunter, Jim Jacobs, lived. End of section 46. Section 47 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Potter County. Formed March 26, 1804, named for General James Potter, an officer of the Revolution, is an almost trackless wilderness covered with dense growth of pine and hemlock, the haunt of bear, deer, wolf, panther, fox, and other wild game. Mean elevation is about 1,900 feet above sea. At headwaters of the West Branch, Genesee, and Allegheny Rivers in the north, the ground is rolling with beautiful farms. The southern part is broken by deep valleys and lofty mountains, with most picturesque scenery, especially in the Kettle Creek and Cinnamahoning Valleys. Probably the first white man to cross the county was David Zeisberger, who passed down the Allegheny River to mouth of the Tyanesta, Forest County, in 1767. His journal, now on file in the Moravian Library at Bethlehem, tells of the wild beauty of the county. Farming and stock raising are gaining, but the main industry is still lumbering, with second growth of hardwoods, maple, beech, and birch, which will in time be a great nucleus of wealth. Earliest important road is the Jersey Shore Turnpike, running from Jersey Shore at the mouth of Pine Creek, Lycoming County, through most wonderful scenery to Cowdersport and on to Buffalo. An effort is being made to have this historic highway improved, as it is the most direct way from the West Branch Valley to Buffalo. On this road is the site of Oleona. Ole Bull, the famous violinist, attempted this settlement of a colony of Norwegians. In 1852, he purchased 11,144 acres on Kettle Creek, in the then almost unbroken forests, and laid out four villages, New Norway, New Bergen, Oleona, and Walhalla. This proved a sad failure, and the land is now included in the State Forest Reserve. Ole Bull's castle, with a great stone wall, still partly standing, was built about a mile below Oleona on the crest of a bluff. Travel is generally good in summer. During the winter, the heavy snowdrifts are often too deep for passage, temperature often falling to 40 degrees below zero. Cowdersport, county seat, settled in 1807, population 2,836. Courthouse, substantial, colonial building in the square, on the main street. In the grounds is the Soldiers' Monument, a granite shaft. Pedestal has names of Potter County men who fell in the war for the Union. The famous Bucktail Regiment was recruited largely from Potter County. Noted marksmen, many had been famous hunters, and because of their wonderful skill with the rifle were made sharpshooters in the Civil War. Christ Protestant Episcopal Church, Incorporated 1833. Present stone building, Gothic, built in 1885, on ground given by Miss Catherine Dent. The beautiful little church, All Saints, at Brooklyn, near the old Dent homestead, memorial to Henry Hatch Dent, by his children, maintained by endowment, is native stone with stained glass windows, marble memorial altar, and other artistic furnishings, opened by appointments of the bishop. It stands as Old St. Martin's in the Field, a solitary witness for Christianity and the church. First Presbyterian, oldest church organization in Cowdersport, established 1832, first building made in 1849, on ground given by John Keating, Esquire. Present building, 4th and Main Streets, dedicated in 1903, Italian Renaissance. Other denominations have good church buildings. The Pennsylvania Historical Commission has made an appropriation for the placing of a monument to David Zeisberger at Cowdersport. They will also place tablets at site of Ole Bull's Castle and near the Austin disaster. The Austin flood in 1911, when the town was almost blotted out, and many lives were lost and property destroyed, was perhaps the worst calamity which has ever visited the county. Three miles east of Cowdersport is the Sweden Valley Ice Mine, in a shaft about six feet square and twelve feet deep. During the hot summer weather, ice is formed here in large quantities. The Smithsonian Institution has published a number of articles concerning these ice caves. 
End of section 47. Section 48 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta R. Shimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Jefferson County. Formed March 26, 1804. Named for Thomas Jefferson. Steep and rugged hills line the watercourses of every stream, alternating with fine valley land, traversed by good roads through the most picturesque scenery. The views are a continual delight. In early days, large tracts of this land were held by rich proprietors who would neither improve nor sell at a fair price. The pioneer hewed his canoes out of pine trees, large enough to receive a barrel of flour crosswise. A homemade rope of flax was attached to the front to pull them over the ripples. The county is wonderfully rich in coal and an abundance of natural gas, and has developed more along commercial than it has along artistic lines. Chief industries, stock raising, coal, iron, glass, and silk. County seat, Brookville, laid out in 1830. Population 3,272. Hunts Point, now Carrier's edition of Brookville, was once an Indian village. Main Street runs east and west. Pickering Street crosses at right angles. Courthouse, at the corner of Main and Pickering Streets. Renaissance, brick, contains portraits. The Brookville Park Association is making great civic improvements. A park of 10 acres is in the center of the town, and a fine new park building, or auditorium, is being erected. The organization being truly altruistic, to the intent that no dividends shall be paid to the subscribers, but all profits applied to municipal improvements. There are several churches. Among them may be mentioned the Presbyterian and Methodist for architecture, both Romanesque, stone. The Presbyterian has good stained glass windows. The Daughters of the American Revolution have placed a small monument to Joseph Barnett in the old cemetery. Fort Barnett was one mile east of Brookville, on the old turnpike, Meade's Trail. His cabin in 1799 is said to have been the only one within 75 miles. Punxsutawney, population 10,311, was an Indian village. During the 18th century, Moravian missionaries labored here among the Delaware tribes of the Algonquin Indians. Brother Edewine kept a faithful record of his travels and work, describing his journey along Mahoning Creek, then named by the Indians Mohobuktidum, or place where canoes are abandoned. Reverend David Barkley and his son-in-law, Dr. John W. Jenks, from Newtown, Bucks County, a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania in 1816, later made an associate judge, owned the land and laid out the town in 1820 in squares, including one for the public, which in this century has been made into a beautiful park by Frederick Olmsted, landscape gardener of Brookline, Massachusetts. On each corner are old cannon from the Civil War. A fine brick post office with ionic portico is here, built by the United States government and many beautiful churches. Christ Episcopal Church is built with stone taken from the creek bed and laid without any cutting. The soft brown color was caused by the mineral in the water, and is permanent. End of section 48. Section 49 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta R. Shambo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Susquehanna County. Formed February 21st, 1810. Named for situation at headwaters of the Susquehanna River, which completely drains the county every stream flowing into it as it flows around a spur of the Alleghenies with the highest outline of two mountains. Original Indian names, Onacagua and Miatonoma. The scenery is beautifully diversified. There are numerous lakes. The largest, Crystal Lake, is over a mile long. From Elk Mountain, with its three peaks, 16 lakes are visible, and the water gap is plainly seen on a clear day. From Ararat, 2,040 feet above the sea level, is also an extended view. A panorama of great beauty is seen from the heights of Gibson Township, the slopes furnish unsurpassed grazing and abound in orchards and gardens. Named for Chief Justice Gibson, the town was first settled in 1792 by Joseph Potter. The most beautiful auto ride through the county is from Montrose to Susquehanna, incorporated in 1853, called the City of Stairs. Erie Railroad shops are here. The buildings, covering eight acres, include a library and lecture hall. Martin's Creek Viaduct, 1,600 feet long with 11 spans, on the Lackawanna Railroad, is said to be, next to the Tunkhannock Viaduct on the same road, the largest concrete bridge in the world. This road is known as the shortest route between New York and Buffalo. Owing to its high elevation through this county, the views are of extraordinary beauty. Earliest white settlement was at Great Bend. General James Clinton, with 1,600 men, encamped here in 1799, en route to join General Sullivan at Chemung against the Indians. Chief industry, agriculture, and butter making. Montrose, population 1,661, made county seat in 1811, 
first settled by Stephen Wilson of Vermont in 1799, is a notable health resort because of its altitude. It was developed through the liberality of Dr. R. H. Rose and Isaac Post. The latter was first postmaster in 1808. Dr. Rose purchased 100,000 acres in 1807, partly in Silver Lake Township, and developed the resources of the county. Public buildings face the square, in which is the monument to Civil War soldiers. Courthouse, a fine structure, colonial architecture built in 1842, contains a portrait of Honorable Galusha A. Gro, who was sent to Congress from this county. The conference building seats 3,000. Here, the Bible Institute is held each summer. At Springville was farm of Zophar Blakesley, whose daughter, Sarah, was married to Honorable Asa Packer. Brooklyn was early residence of George Catlin, who became noted as a painter of Indians. Jackson started as a beaver meadow. When Thompson was first settled in 1820, an unbroken forest of beech wood stretched eastward for 50 miles. End of section 49. Section 50 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambeau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Bradford County. Formed February 21, 1810, as Ontario. On March 24, 1812, named in honor of William Bradford, an attorney general in the cabinet of Washington. Surface hilly or rolling. Chief industries are dairying and breeding of fine cattle and thoroughbred horses said to be first place on record visited by a white man in Pennsylvania. In 1615, Stephen Brule, explorer and interpreter for Samuel Champlain, with twelve Huron Indians, came to Caruantian, a palisaded village of the Caruantianes, on Spanish Hill, just above present towns of Sayre and Athens. He found here 800 warriors, 500 of whom went with him to aid Champlain against the Onondaga stronghold in New York. Brule returned to Caruantian, remained during the winter of 1615-16, and explored the Susquehanna River to the sea, making report to Champlain. First road was the great Indian war path along the Susquehanna, used by General Sullivan and his Continental Army in expedition against the Indians in 1779. The state road from Wilkesbury up the river through Wyoming and Bradford counties is substantially on this old trail. Historic places along the road are well marked. A monument 13 feet high, native stone, from Campbell's Ledge above Pittston, erected by the Moravian Historical Society in 1871 near Wyalusing. Mark's location of the Moravian mission. Inscription. To mark site of Friedenschutten, Mac Willising, a settlement of Moravian Indians between 1765 to 1772. This mission was removed to Beaver County in 1772. Farther west, near the Presbyterian Church, is a large boulder with bronze tablet. Inscription. Near the site from August 5th to 8th, 1779, camped the army of Major General Sullivan on their expedition against the Six Nations, erected by Mac Willising Chapter. D.A.R. 1914. This road, after leaving Wyalusing, leads over the hill a distance from the river, to which it returns again at Rummerfield, near where Mrs. Roswell Franklin was killed by Indians. Her family was rescued. Farther up the river is the county's oldest historic landmark on west bank of the Susquehanna. Standing stone, 25 feet high, 21 feet at base, tapers from 4 to 3 feet in thickness rising out of the water. A landmark even in early Indian history, plainly visible from the road. General Sullivan's army of 3,500 men camped on the plain opposite. Three miles east of Tawanda is Wysox Village and Creek. In front of an old brick church is where Major Henry Van Campen, with two other captives, succeeded in releasing themselves, under guard by twice their number of Indians, killing all except one. Near is a large boulder of Barclay sandstone with bronze tablet. Inscription. This stone commemorates the passing through Wessoking, August 9th and October 4th, 1779, of Major General John Sullivan and his troops against the Six Nations, erected 1908 by the George Clymer Chapter, D.A.R., Tawanda, Pennsylvania. On the level plain between this creek and the river, General Sullivan's army camped. From Wysox, the road diverges west from the old trail, continues over a modern steel bridge built in 1915, replacing an old covered wooden one made in 1834 to Tawanda. Eight miles northwest is Ulster. Passing on the way near mouth of Sugar Creek, is site of an important palisaded Indian village called Ogahage, later Oskalui. Still later, in 1779, Nudie Channing, marked at junction of this great warpath along the Susquehanna, with one leading from this point to headwaters of Tawanda Creek near Canton, thence to headwaters of Lycoming Creek, down that stream to west branch of the Susquehanna near Williamsport. At Ulster, Old Cheshequin was a Moravian mission, removed at time of migration to Beaver in 1772. A steel bridge crosses the river here. Next is Milan Village, 
near which was Indian Queen Esther's town, destroyed by Colonel Hartley in 1778. Proceeding on General Sullivan's road, one crosses the Chemung, Tioga, River on a modern steel bridge and enters Athens, formerly Tioga Point. Here was Fort Sullivan, base of supplies for the army, destroyed by themselves in October 1779 on their departure for Wyoming, marked by a boulder with bronze tablet, inscription. In Sullivan's expedition, the march that destroyed savagery and opened the Keystone and Empire states to civilization, four brigades, furnished by the states of Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and New Hampshire, with Proctor's artillery, and Farr's riflemen took part. At Tioga Point, along the southern door of the Indian Confederacy, 5,000 troops encamped. Here stood Fort Sullivan, with four blockhouses, from August 11th to October 3rd, 1779, tablet erected by Tioga Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. Below the plate is embedded a ball from one of General Sullivan's guns. The road separates here, one following the Susquehanna to Owego, the other following the Chemung to Elmira, Newtown, New York. Near the latter road is the battlefield of Newtown, where General Sullivan fought the Tories and Indians in 1779. A soldier's monument is on the campus in front of the old Athens Academy, designed by McKim, Meade, and White, New York. Ground foundation, 25 feet square, enclosed in granite curbing with polished globes at each corner. Pedestal, 11 feet high. Rising from the center, polished granite. On unpolished granite coping, surmounted by a bronze group. The protection of the flag. Barefoot drummer boy with a flag over his shoulder and a tall, fearless soldier, holding a musket which points to the ground. Sculptor, George T. Brewster. Inscription in bronze letters, fitted to the face of the granite. Pro Patria et Gloria. Erected to the memory of our soldiers who fought in defense of the flag. Presented by Joseph Whipple and Charlotte Snell Stickler. Spalding Library and Museum, classic renaissance with ionic porch, open to the public, contains paintings, portraits, and relics. In 1688, a Spanish fort was near the present borough of Athens. Population, 4,384. Tawanda, county seat, laid out in 1812. Population, 4,269. Courthouse, native sandstone, classic renaissance, built in 1897. In front is the Soldiers' Monument. At base are bronze tablets inscribed with names of battles of Bradford County men in war for the Union, Pickett's Charge at Gettysburg, and the battle seen at Antietam, dedicated in 1901. Tawanda Free Library, French Renaissance, brick, built 1897, was given and endowed by Francis R. Wells of Paris, France. Architects, Barney and Chapman, New York. Contains a special set of books, the art. In Christ Protestant Episcopal Church, native sandstone, is memorial window to William Ulysses Merker, Chief Justice of Pennsylvania, 1882-87. Makers, Cox, Sons, and Buckley, London. The Methodist Episcopal Church also has memorial windows. Historical Society of Bradford County, fireproof building open to the public. Contains Indian and Civil War relics, curios, and portraits of pioneer men and women. A reproduction of a pioneer log house, and specimens of all native woods in the county. In Riverside Cemetery is the grave of David Wilmot, who made the famous proviso engraved on his monument against slavery. There are many borough and township high schools in Bradford County. End of section 50. Section 51 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margaret R. Shimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Schuylkill County. Formed March 1, 1811, named for the Schuylkill River, was purchased from the Six Nations in 1749. George Gottfried Orwig, first settler in 1747, lived at Sculp Hill. He was followed by other Germans. Orwigsburg, first county seat in 1811, was founded in 1796 by Peter Orwig, son of George. Old courthouse still standing is used as a factory. Extensive views from here of mountains and agricultural valleys. In chain of frontier forts were Franklin, built 1756, by order of Benjamin Franklin, Fort Henry, south of Pine Grove, and Fort Lebanon, later known as Fort William. The most important, its site near Auburn is marked by boulder with bronze tablet. Inscription. On this site stood Fort Lebanon, built 1775 by Colonel Jacob Morgan, for protection of early settlers against Indians, erected in 1913 by Mahantongo Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, Pottsville, PA. Indian warriors came down from the mountains and made savage forays on the peaceful farms, in which many people were massacred, and mills and houses were burned. The old oak tree is standing near, from which sentinels took observations. In this fort, the first religious services in the county were held. One mile from Fort Lebanon is the old red church, built in 1755, destroyed by Indians 1756, rebuilt 1776, celebrated its sesquicentennial in 1905. 
This county revels in picturesque scenery. Excellent roads curve through valleys of surpassing richness and fertility, or wander along a ridge with glorious views on either side. In the north, the skyline of a mountain range is often broken by a weird coal breaker. In every direction, there is beauty and interest. Laurel may be seen by the acre and much rhododendron. Great cliffs of various colored conglomerate rock are found throughout the county. This is the southern limit of the anthracite coal fields in east-central Pennsylvania, the only ones of importance in the United States. Divided into three well-known trade regions, Wyoming, Lehigh, and Schuylkill, comprising an area of 480 square miles in the counties of Carbon, Columbia, Lackawanna, Northumberland, Luzerne, Susquehanna, and Schuylkill. Discovered in Schuylkill County by Nico Allen in 1790, while camping out overnight, he built a fire among some rocks under shelter of the trees. During the night, being awakened by unusual heat, he saw the rocks a mass of glowing fire, he having ignited the outcrop of a bed of coal. The birth of this great productive industry may be dated from 1820, when 365 tons were sent to Philadelphia from the headwaters of the Lehigh River. 80 million tons per annum are now produced. Location of coal was shown in William Skull's Map of Pennsylvania, published in 1770. Three places marked. In 1795, it was used successfully for smithing by a blacksmith named Whitestone, but not generally for this purpose until 1806. In 1812, Colonel George Shoemaker produced coal from a shaft on land he owned, now known as the Centerville Tract loaded nine wagons, and drove to Philadelphia, where he was accused of being an imposter, attempting to sell stone for coal. He sold two loads for cost of transportation, and gave the rest away to those who promised to try to use it. He induced Messrs. Mellon and Bishop to try it in their rolling mill in Delaware County, where it was found to be a complete success. Iron was heated in much less time than usual, and the workmen said, it passed through the rolls like lead. From 1830, rapid improvements were made in methods of mining and transporting coal. First breaker in this county was erected by Gideon Bast on Wolf Creek near Minersville. The St. Clair shaft was sunk in 1845 by Alfred Lawton to Primrose Vein, 122 feet. In 1851, E.W. McGinnis continued the depth of shaft to the Mammoth Vein, 438 feet. At Wadesville, a shaft was sunk 619 and a half feet. A shaft located by General Henry Pleasance is deepest coal shaft in the United States, 1,584 feet. The collieries of the Philadelphia and Reading Coal Company are the most extensive. Property in Schuylkill and Columbia counties, 18,333 acres, one-third coal, devised by Stephen Gerard of the City of Philadelphia and Trust, comprises some of the most valuable tracts in the anthracite region. Gerard was largely instrumental in building the Schuylkill Canal to Philadelphia. Connecting with this was a railroad and a series of gravity planes between Gerardville and Mount Carbon, head of the canal. The Gerard Railroad opened in 1834, was one of the greatest engineering feats of the time, attracting international comment. Much of the masonry is still to be seen. In 1690, William Penn called attention to the feasibility of passage by water between the Susquehanna River and Tulpahocken Creek, a branch of the Schuylkill. In 1762, David Rittenhouse and Dr. William Smith surveyed a route for a canal to connect waters of the Susquehanna and Schuylkill via Swatara and Tulpahocken Creeks, and actually traced a line between the Delaware and Ohio rivers at Fort Pitt, thence to Erie. The Union Canal connecting the Schuylkill and Susquehanna Rivers was completed in 1826 by the Schuylkill Navigation Company. They did great work in their day. Years of greatest prosperity were from 1835 to 41. In 1800, Reese and Thomas located an iron furnace on the site of Pottsville. In 1807, Greenwood Furnace and Forge were erected by John Pott. In 1839, Pioneer Furnace at Pottsville under Bird Patterson was blown in with anthracite coal by Benjamin Perry and ran for about three months among the first to successfully use anthracite coal in blast furnace in the United States. Pottsville, county seat, 1,395 feet above sea, population 21,876, laid out in 1816, has not one level street. Flights of steps are frequently used to get to various heights. Fine views from every point. A commission for city planning has lately been appointed. Courthouse erected in 1892. Architect Mr. Taylor stands on a hill in a terrace square, has portraits of judges. In the old courthouse, to the rear, now torn down, the Molly Maguires were tried and convicted in 1876. Soldier's Monument erected in 1891 is in Garfield Square. On a pedestal are names of battles fought by Schuylkill County men in Civil War. The Washington Artillery and National Light Infantry of Pottsville, 246 men, were part of the 530 Pennsylvanians who first arrived at our national capital for its defense in 1861. Schuylkill County sent 13,000 volunteers. There are also soldiers' monuments at Port Carbon, St. Clair, and Mahanoy City. A statue of John Pott is in the playground of Center Street Public School, formerly a cemetery. Pennsylvania, the coal-producing state of the Union, has every reason to be grateful to Henry Clay for advocating a protective tariff on her principal product. 
Pottsville's enthusiasm culminated in the Henry Clay Monument completed in 1855, soon after his death, west of South Center Street. An iron Doric column surmounted by an iron statue of Henry Clay after the painting by P. F. Rothermill, Senate of 1850. First colossal iron casting of its kind made in the United States. From sidewalk to top of statue, 205 feet. Possible cemetery contains grave of Joseph Ellison, member of Greeley Arctic Expedition, who died at Port Haven, Greenland, in 1884, soon after being rescued by the late Rear Admiral Schley. A diary kept until his hands were frozen stiff will soon be published by the Pottsville Historical Society. Parks in Schuylkill County are Lakeside above Mahanoy City, Marlin near Pottsville, Manila east of Tamaqua, Woodland between Ashland and Gerardville, Washington between Ashland and Locust Dale, they are combinations of formal gardening with natural beauty. Tumbling Run Dam near Pottsville is beautiful in its setting. Shenandoah, population 24,726, contains a mixed mining population. 26 languages and dialects are spoken here. End of section 51. Section 52 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Lehigh County. Formed March 6, 1812, named for Lehigh River from an Indian name, Likowikink, where there are forks. Indian trails forked in various directions below Bethlehem. The Blue Mountains are north and the Lehigh Hills south, containing large deposits of slate and cement. Chief industries, agriculture and manufacturing. Allentown, county seat at junction of Jordan and Little Lehigh Creeks, Population 73,502, was settled in 1751 by Chief Justice William Allen, a friend of the Penns, is entered from the south by, it is said, the largest concrete bridge in the world, erected by a trolley company, 2,650 feet long and 120 feet high, built in 1913. The city has an abundant supply of pure water pumped direct from the spring to the residences, daily flow 12 million gallons. Courthouse, Colonial with Cupola, 5th and Hamilton Streets. First Presbyterian Church, North 5th Street, near Hamilton, Renaissance. Jail, North 4th Street, near Linden. Feudal architecture with tower 100 feet high. Brown sandstone. Architect, G.A. Ashbach. Allen Park, 4th and Walnut Street, contains Trout Hall. Stone, built 1770 by James Allen, son of the founder, which will be occupied by the Lehigh County Historical Society. West Park and River Park are also in Allentown. West of the city is Dorney's Park, along Cedar Creek. In center square is the Soldiers' Monument to the men of Lehigh County in the Civil War. On the pedestal are bronze bas-reliefs depicting scenes of war and reconciliation, and medallion busts of Generals Meade, McClellan, Hancock, and Hartranft. United States Post Office at the corner of 6th and Turner Streets, classic, built in 1906, brick and Indiana limestone. Architect, George B. Page, Philadelphia. Several fine churches of brick or stone show Italian and Gothic architecture. The Zion Reformed, Gothic, Stone, built 1840, Hamilton Street between 6th and 7th, is notable for having sheltered the Liberty Bell and the Christ Church Bells during British occupation of Philadelphia in 1777, marked by tablet placed by the Liberty Bell chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. The Rhodes House, 107 to 109 North 7th Street, built 1762 by a revolutionary patriot, is the oldest building in the city. Muhlenberg College with Preparatory School is beautifully located at 26th and Chew Streets, on campus of 72 acres. The buildings, brick and stone, were built from 1903 to 1915. Administration Building, English Renaissance. Architects, Rule and Lange. Contains portraits, including one of Dr. Muhlenberg by Gilbert Stewart. The late Peter A. Gross in 1914, provided by will for the founding of an art school in Muhlenberg College, and an art museum in Allentown. Allentown College for Women, Walnut Street between 30th and 31st Streets, Classic, and the new high school, North 17th Street, Classic Ionic, are fine buildings. At 17th and Chew Streets are the State Hospital, Georgian, Brick and Indiana Limestone, and the Nurses Home, Memorial to Judge Edward Harvey, said to be the best equipped for the purpose in the United States. Architects, Rule and Lange. Road from Rittersville to Bethlehem passes Central Park, overlooking Lehigh River and the historic Geisinger Farm, where Solomon Jennings settled in 1736. He was a participant in the Indian Walk of 1737. Bethlehem, see Northampton County. State Road from Allentown to Sladington passes through Wernersville, near where Linford Lardner built in 1740 a hunting lodge, Grouse Hall, and where the Jordan Reformed Church was founded in 1752, present stone building erected 1808. 
through Guthsville, Guth Homestead still standing, built 1745. Through Seekersville, on left, is Colonel H.C. Trexler's game preserve of 2,000 acres, containing buffalo, elk, deer, and trout hatchery. To Schnecksville, former home of Professor Rudy, founder of the Rudy School, Paris, in 1865, an international association of professors. He was a fellow of the French Academy. Here is Lamb Spring Park. The next village, Neffs, has an ancient graveyard, burial place of many revolutionary patriots. Then to Sladington, heart of the Slate region. A chain bridge built over the Lehigh River in 1826 leads to Lehigh Gap. Another state road from Allentown goes through Catasauqua. Here in 1914 was celebrated the 75th anniversary of the successful uniting of the state's two chief resources, the use of anthracite coal in the iron furnaces by David Thomas from Wales. Coke has since replaced anthracite, but the furnaces and the general method are much as Thomas left them. These were the mother furnaces of the Bethlehem Steelworks, Cambria Ironworks, Thomas Ironworks at Hawk and Dakwa, and the stupendous development of the iron trade in this country. A private art collection owned by D.G. Derry, Esquire, comprises an important collection of paintings, statuary, bronzes, ivories, Chinese porcelains, and jades. Continue on State Road through Mickleys to Egypt. Union Church, Lutheran and Reformed, founded 1734 in Log Church, present brick building erected 1785. Nearby is Deschler's Fort, built 1760, and the Troxel Steckel House, Stone, built 1756. A mile north is Tablet, placed by Lehigh County Historical Society, marking place where occurred the last Indian massacre in this county, of three families in 1763. End of section 52. Section 53 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Lebanon County. Formed February 16, 1813. Scriptural name from the cedar trees covering the range of mountains on northern boundary, Cedars of Lebanon. Settled by Germans in the east, by the Scotch-Irish in the west. Leading industries, agriculture, iron, tobacco. Three solid hills of rich magnetic iron ore have been worked for over 170 years and still seem inexhaustible. They require no mining, simply to be quarried. Down to the present, these mines have produced more iron ore than any other single iron ore property in the United States. In 1737, Peter Grubb became sole owner of these ore hills. He built Hopewell Forge on Hammer Creek, and the large blast furnace was named for Cornwall, his ancestral home in England. The property was inherited by his two sons, who were colonels in the Revolutionary War. Cannonballs and stoves were cast here for the Continental Army. In 1798, Robert Coleman purchased five-sixths of these ore banks. They were near the old road between Harris Ferry and Philadelphia, known as the Burks and Dauphin Road. Later, his grandsons, Robert and G. Dawson Coleman, built furnaces on the Union Canal, then the great means of transportation. By that time, charcoal furnaces were going out. The construction and operation of the Union Canal through this county, connecting the Schuylkill River at Reading with the Susquehanna at Middletown, was a momentous event, with its tunnel 767 feet long, first in the United States. Extract. Lebanon, June 15, 1827. Last Monday evening, June 11th, the citizens of this town and vicinity had the privilege of seeing the first boat, the Alpha from Tulpehawken, come up the Union Canal and remain at North Lebanon for the night. The next morning it continued its journey westward and passed through the tunnel. This was the first boat to pass through a tract of ground upon which corn and potatoes were being grown. County seat, Lebanon, population 24,643, on the William Penn Highway, settled in 1750. Streets run north and south, east and west. Courthouse at the corner of 8th and Cumberland Streets, Colonial, Brick. United States Post Office, Classic, with Doric Columns. A historic inn, the St. Ites, built in 1752, was occupied by George Washington. Hill Church, Colonial, Brick. In the yard is a monument to Reverend John Casper Stover, first Lutheran minister in Lebanon County, 1733. St. Luke's Protestant Episcopal Church, Gothic, Stone, built without a nail, has three memorial windows. The Nativity by Lamb. Others made in England. Also, fine collection of altar cloths, chasubles, and credence cloth made abroad in fillet of 15th century design. Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Monument Park. Tall, fluted column with ionic capital. Lebanon Historical Society has collections of local interest. Anvil is seat of Lebanon Valley College, founded by the United Brethren in 1865, a school of high grade under supervision of that church. Mount Gretna, a campground of 1,000 or more acres, 1,000 feet above sea level, was purchased by the state for mobilization of the state's National Guard. It will accommodate 20,000 men and has been used for this purpose since 1885. 
the War Department considers Mount Gretna an ideal military camp, sanitary and well-drained. Schaeferstown, one of the earliest and most historic places in this county, laid out in 1744, had the first waterworks system in the United States in 1753. Franklin House built in 1750. In the cellar, there is a remarkable series of carved arches. It served as a place of refuge from Indians. Fountain Hill Park is here. Myerstown is the seat of Albright College. Fredericksburg has the Lick Monument, erected in 1881 by James Lick, in memory of his grandfather's services at Valley Forge, and of John Lick, founder of Lick Observatory on Mount Hamilton, California. End of section 53. Section 54 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Union County. Formed March 22, 1813, named for the Union, chiefly agricultural, is divided by spurs of the Alleghenies, known as White Deer, Nittany, Buffalo, Paddies, and Jack's Mountains, into three valleys. The center, Buffalo Valley, is one of the garden spots in Pennsylvania, formerly home of many Amish and Dunkards, good farmers and citizens. Lewisburg, county seat, laid out in 1785, population 3,204, named for Ludwig, Lewis Dewar, who purchased the land from Richard Peters of Philadelphia. A rare specimen of conveyancing is deed, lot 51, in plan of Lewisburg, tracing title from the creator down through Adam and Eve to one Flavel Rowan, recorded at Sunbury in deed book F, 1793. Finally located at mouth of Buffalo Creek, West Branch of the Susquehanna, on the Great Indian Path from Sunbury to Muncie, now main highway from Harrisburg to Williamsport, and on line of turnpikes leading from Erie through Waterford, Meadville, and Franklin to Susquehanna River. Seat of Bucknell University, incorporated in 1846, co-ed with courses in arts, science, philosophy, and engineering. The library and museum have the Jeremiah Gernard collection of Indian relics open to the public. From the top of the Astronomical Observatory, it's a fine view. In Lewisburg Cemetery is the grave of Colonel John Kelly, distinguished in Indian warfare in the Revolution. He died in 1832. His monument with military emblems was erected in 1835. Sculptor W. Hubbard. Also the grave of Mary, widow of Captain John Brady, the great Indian fighter, who was massacred by Indians and buried near where he fell in Lycoming County. One mile west of Lewisburg, from the top of Smoketown Hill, is a fine view of Buffalo Valley across the Susquehanna to Muncie Hills and North Mountain. Historic places, site of Shikalemi's old town, a wooded crest opposite Milton, four miles north of Lewisburg. He was chief of the Oneidas and father of Logan the Mingo chief, place now called Oak Heights. Driesbach, five miles west of Lewisburg, German Reformed and Lutheran Church, first log building built 1788 on site of present Brick Church. In burial ground is the grave and monument to Samuel Maclay, born 1741, brother of William Maclay. Inscription. Samuel McClay, United States Senator, 1803-09, surveyor, farmer, soldier, legislator, statesman, erected by State of Pennsylvania, 1908. Buffalo Cross Roads, Presbyterian Church, first built 1775, present brick building about 1846. Mifflinburg, the neatest town you ever saw, with uniform curbing and walks, population 1,744, in heart of Buffalo Valley, named for Governor Mifflin, 10 miles west of Lewisburg, laid out 1792 by Elias Youngman. New Berlin, laid out 1792 by George Long, delightfully situated on north bank of Penn's Creek, first county seat, at one time home of Union Seminary, Central Pennsylvania College. End of section 54. Section 55 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Columbia County. Formed March 22, 1813. Name explains itself. Is in Appalachian Mountain Belt, surface quite broken with wonderfully beautiful drives. The Catawissa Railroad, noted for its remarkable trestle bridges, first one at Mainville, runs through this county, crossing the Susquehanna River at Rupert. Arable land, mostly red shale and limestone, with deposits of iron ore at Bloomsburg and the anthracite coal basin at Centralia. Chief Industries, Manufacturing. The carpet mill here is said to be the second largest in the United States. Earliest historical bands of Indians in this county were the Shawnees and Delawares, vassals to the Six Nations. Wyoming Path, their route of travel for hunting or war, left Muncie on the West Branch, ran up Glade Run through a gap to Fishing Creek, and on to Luzerne County through Nescapec Gap, and up the North Branch to Wyoming. 
Bloomsburg, population 7,819, laid out in 1802 by Ludwig Eyer on a bluff on Fishing Creek, became county seat in 1846. In 1772, the Shawnee Indians had a village between the mouth of the creek and the town. James McClure located his farm near the same point in 1781. A fort was erected there, built by Major Moses Van Campen, now marked from which he led scouting parties. In 1779, Van Campen, as quartermaster, accompanied General Sullivan's expedition against Indian towns on the Genesee. There is much discussion here about city planning. The town lies due north and south, named streets, east and west, numbered, Second Street being the main street, and also forms part of State Highway leading from Harrisburg to Wilkesbury. Courthouse on Main Street, Renaissance, contains, it is said, a very beautiful piece of tapestry. Jail, stone, feudal architecture. Soldiers and Sailors Monument at the intersection of Main and Market Streets, erected in 1908. The Methodist Church, Gothic, stone, has a Tiffany window, Christ blessing little children. Other churches that may be mentioned for architecture are St. Paul's Protestant Episcopal and First Presbyterian, both Gothic. St. Matthew's, Evangelical Lutheran, Trinity Reformed, and St. Columba's, Roman Catholic, Colonial. In 1869, this was made the educational center of Northeast Pennsylvania, with the State Normal School, cornerstone laid by Governor Geary in 1868, Normal Auditorium, Colonial, and other extensive buildings. Catawissa, originally a Quaker settlement, scenery fine and picturesque, was laid out in 1787 by William Hughes from Berks County, has an old friend's meeting house. John Hanch was one of the first to build an iron furnace here on the Catawissa in 1816. Earlier, the Piscawatees, or Gangawees, Kenhawas, had wigwams here. Fort Jenkins, near mouth of Briar Creek on the Susquehanna, was attacked and burned by Indians, 1779-80. to A house is now on the site of the fort. Berwick was settled by Evan Owen in 1783. Here in 1826, the steamboat Susquehanna blew up while ascending the Nescapec Falls. Also, ground was broken here for the North Branch Canal. End of section 55. Section 56 of Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Pike County. Formed March 26, 1814. Named for General Zebulon Pike, killed in Canada, 1813. When the chronicler takes up his pen to write of the glories of Pike County in works of art, architecture, and monuments to the departed great, in peace or war, he is somewhat appalled at the dearth of them. The landmarks are what God made, softened and beautified by time. Milford, county seat, population 768, was laid out by John Biddis, 1793, in squares, after pattern of Philadelphia. It rests high above the Delaware River, overlooking a valley of myriad hues that have made the town notable for its quaint, umbrageous beauty and repose. Pioneer settlers were substantial people whose descendants still reside here. It is a popular resort for trout fishing in the spring, vacationists in the summer, and for deer and bird hunting in the fall. Courthouse, brick, French design, built in 1873, in center of town, facing the public square. Two mortars from the Civil War are in the front lawn. Opposite is the jail, built in 1815 as courthouse and jail. Made of native boulders, carefully selected for shades and tints. Some are opalescent and show brilliantly in certain lights. A wooden trout, five feet long, pointing the way of the wind, is as old as the building. Forestry building, probably handsomest village structure of its kind in the United States, Erected in 1900 by the late James Wallace Pinchot. Normandy design, native stone. Architects, hunt and hunt. In niches are busts of Washington and Franklin. Mortized and alternately are bas-reliefs of F. A. Michaud, 1746-1802, author of Flora Boreale Americana, General Lafayette in 1777, and Bernard Palissy, 1506-89, potter and writer on botany and forestry. Sculptor, J. F. Weir. The Homestead Library, formerly home of Cyril Pinchot, pure colonial, is in center of town. To the rear is Normandy Cottage, an architectural gem, replica of a peasant's home cottage. Grey Towers, the Pinchot estate, native stone, reproduction of a baronial castle in the Scottish Highlands, crowns the hill about 1,000 feet above Milford. The old Scotch garden with high stone wall is of rare beauty. Yale School of Forestry is on the Pinchot estate, with an echo of the Sawkill Falls. Monument to Tom Quick, the Avenger of the Delaware, is on his birthplace. He killed 99 Indians to avenge the death of his father, who was the first settler in Milford, in 1733. The principal denominations are represented in the churches. Old inns are the Chrisman House, built 1810, the Sawkill House, 1823, Southern Colonial, the Dimmock House, 1828, Horace Greeley stopped here in 1840 and later, 
One of his fondest hopes was the cooperative community of interest settlement known as the Sylvania Society, which he, with others, organized in 1842 at Greeley. Founded on the sacredness of toil, but the young men, sons of affluent parents, who had been sent there by New Yorkers who bought stock, did not know how to work, nor did they wish to learn, and so they deserted. The Bluff House on the banks of the Delaware, built 1876, commands a fine view. Lawn of Milford Inn is planted with rare shrubs and trees from all parts of the world. The Hermitage has three unique bronze sundials. Sculptor, Louis F. Rago. The one depicting Father Time with upraised reaper is beautiful. The Hermit's Glen, so a legend goes, is where an old French hermit of profound knowledge and benevolence found the water of life after a worldwide search. These waters now flow into the lake through two bronze masks. Two cement giants hold up the dam that feeds the lake. Wells Glen lies along the Sawkill Brook. Rhododendrons, wood flowers, and giant hemlocks make it beautiful. Child's Park, back of Dingman's Ferry, given in perpetuity for use of the public by Mrs. G. W. Childs, is a rugged mountain stretch, woodland and meadow. Cataracts and deep pools are in the trout stream that comes through it. Bushkill, another haunt for nature lovers, and Shahola, all remarkable for beautiful falls, glens, caves. In writing of the Delaware Valley, Edmund Clarence Stedman says, But here there is no swooning of the languid air, and no seeming always after noon. It is a morning land with every cliff facing the rising sun. The mist and languor are in the grain fields far below. The hills themselves are of the richest, darkest green. The skies are blue and fiery. The air crisp, oxygenated, American. It is no place for lotus eating, but for drinking water of the fountain of youth, till one feels the zest and thrill of a new life that is not unrestful, yet as far as may be from the lethargy of mere repose. Among the artists who have painted here are William M. Chase, J. Alden Weir, Swain Gifford, Carol Beckwith, Henry Satterley, Charles C. Curran, W. A. Rogers, and Benjamin Constant, France. End of section 56. Section 57 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Perry County. Formed March 12, 1820, named for Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, lying between the Tuscarora and the Blue Mountains, it abounds in beautiful scenery, low hills, rich valleys, and abundant streams. Chief industry, agriculture. New Bloomfield, county seat, settled in 1820, Streets run due east and west, north and south. Courthouse faces the center square, colonial with cupola, brick, built in 1868. Fireproof annex, built 1892. Soldiers' monument in the square, memorial to soldiers and sailors of Perry County. Among the good church buildings may be noted the Methodist. Architect M. A. Cast, Harrisburg. Sherman's Dale was in 1720 an Indian village. At Marysville, a long stone arch bridge on the Pennsylvania Railroad line crosses over the Susquehanna River from Rockville, Dauphin County. The Marysville Civic Club has done much for the improvement of the town, and has beautified the town square and schoolyard. Beyond Duncannon, where an immense traffic in coal and iron is carried on, one goes through the valley of the beautiful Juniata. The scenery along this river, as one crosses ridge after ridge of the Alleghenies, is most picturesque, and the region traversed is full of historical reminiscences of the struggles of early Scotch-Irish colonists with the Indians, and of the enterprise of David Brainerd and other missionaries. At Millerstown, one threads the Tuscarora Gap, where the railway, river, road, and canal squeeze their way through this narrow defile. This lay in the land of the Tuscarora Indians. End of section 57. Section 58 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Juniata County. Formed March 2, 1831. Name from the Juniata River was given by the original people who lived in this region, and who were obliterated by the Iroquois. Root of word means a stone. Standing stone may be regarded as translation of Onajadahaga, or the Juniata people. A mountainous country with many fertile valleys, situated between the Tuscarora and Blue Ridge Mountains, famous for its scenery, with the Blue Juniata making a wide sweep. The Pennsylvania Canal followed its banks throughout its whole course. First settlers were mostly Scotch-Irish. The old homestead of Francis Innes, one and a half stories, stone, east of McCoysville, is still in possession of descendants, now used as a spring house. His two children, captured by the Indians, were recovered among those delivered to Colonel Bouquet in 1764. Another old landmark, eight miles away, is the D.B. Esch House on East Waterford Road, built by Mr. Graham in 1802, has an open stairway carved by hand. First road laid out in 1768 was from Sherman's Valley, 
to Kishikokelis Valley, the historic road between Harrisburg and Pittsburgh through the famous Jack's Narrows, over which stagecoaches traveled, is now part of the William Penn Highway. Sites of Forts Bingham and Patterson will soon be marked by the General Thomas Mifflin Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, Chief Industries, Agriculture, and Manufactories. Mifflin Town, county seat, population 1,083, joined with its twin borough, Mifflin, on Pennsylvania Railroad Main Line by bridge over the Juniata, was laid out in 1791 by John Harris and named in honor of the governor of the state, General Mifflin. Courthouse and center of town on Main Street, built 1874, brick, Georgian, with ionic porch and cupola. And the yard is a monument surrounded by a spread eagle to Civil War soldiers from Juniata County, erected in 1870. The churches are of good architecture, and the graded high school is said to be the best between Harrisburg and Huntington. End of section 58. Section 59 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Monroe County. Formed April 1, 1836, named in honor of President James Monroe, the Pocono Mountains and long, fertile valleys cover the surface. Chief industries, farming, lumber, and manufacturing. In the southeast, where the Delaware River turns suddenly at Mount Kittatinny, towering 1,600 feet above it, is the Delaware Water Gap, with views of great distance from the highest point. Near are the Wind Gap and Smith Gap. William Penn's famous walking land purchase ended near here. The Milford Road, laid out about 1800 from Easton, leaves Delaware River at Water Gap Village, thence four miles to Stroudsburg, then to Bush Kill and beyond. Stroudsburg, county seat, population 5,278, first settled by Jacob Strouds, laid out at right angles with a liberal plan of broad avenues, and houses set back 30 feet from the sidewalk, resembles a New England village. Courthouse, built 1890 of rough stone with high chimneys and belfry, contains portraits of judges, with jail and county house forms group facing the public square. Churches are of all principal denominations. The National Bank and other buildings are chiefly by Lacey and Son architects. A fine stone and iron bridge built by the state over Broadhead Creek connects the two boroughs of Stroudsburg and East Stroudsburg. It replaced a wooden one over 100 years old, carried away by the Freshet in 1862. In 1755, Indians crossed over the old bridge, burned Dansbury Mission and other buildings, leaving Stroudsburg without a house or resident. Ephraim Culver, who had a gristmill there, escaped with his family to the Moravians at Bethlehem. About 1756, a line of forts were erected to protect the frontier settlements. Sites are unmarked. Fort Norris at Greenswego, Eldred Township, on road toward the Minisinks, 80 feet square, was completely stockaded. Fort Hinshaw at the mouth of Bushkill Creek was built for the Revolutionary War. Fort Hamilton was built in 1757, some 100 feet beyond the Lutheran Church in western part of the town. Fort Penn, center of town, was residence of Jacob Stroud, who died in 1806. Here, in 1778, he cared for 30 or more persons, fugitives from the Wyoming Massacre, who crossed the Pocono Plateau with great toil and distress, later proceeding to their former homes in Connecticut. At Locust Ridge in Wyoming Valley, a battle was fought, called the Pennamite War, between Connecticut claimants and Pennsylvanians. General Sullivan and his troops, in 1779, laid out a road through this county, from Wind Gap to Stoddartsville, Wilkes-Barre, and so on continuing an expedition from Easton to Genesee Valley against the Indians. It may still be traced almost the entire way. General Daniel Broadhead and most of his male relatives from Monroe County were in the Revolutionary War. Monroe County was a portion of the lands of the Minisinks. There were several Indian villages. The Delaware chief, Ted Uskung, born on the Pocono Mountains, resided here. It is said that the first white settlement in Pennsylvania was at Shawnee by the Low Dutch or Hollanders in Minisink, many years before William Penn's charter. When Nicholas Skull surveyed the land for the province, Samuel Dupuy was here. He purchased land in 1727 from the Mincy Indians, now site of Shawnee, an attractive village, five miles east of Stroudsburg, and the same property later from William Allen, 1733, for whom the oldest survey in the county was made. End of section 59. Section 60 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Clarion County. Formed March 11, 1839, named from Clarion River. The scenery is beautiful and diversified. At the highest point over 1,600 feet above sea level, a flagstaff has been erected. From here on a clear day may be seen the bridge at East Brady and four villages in the far distance. 
Hills and valleys are dotted here and there with oil and gas wells. There are beautiful views along the Clarion and Allegheny Rivers and Red Bank Creek. The scenery at East Brady is notable on account of the precipitous hills and winding streams. First white settler was Captain Samuel Brady of Revolutionary fame. His parents having been killed by Indians, he swore vengeance against them. He conducted an expedition in 1779 under General Broadhead, who had started with a large force from Fort Pitt. The Indians had become troublesome along the Allegheny River. Brady, in advance with scouts, discovered them on a flat rock at a place which is now East Brady. He took possession of a narrow pass, and when the Indians arrived, he opened fire, with the main army in the rear. Escape was impossible, and nearly all were killed or taken prisoners. In early days, this region was called the Iron City on account of its many furnaces. Forty were in operation at one time. They are now cinders and banks of earth. The oil production in this county has been wonderful. 5,000 oil wells were drilled in Clarion after 1870, and there is still much wealth in it. Other industries are gas, coal, and agriculture. Two long tunnels are at Madison Furnace on the railroad between Clarion and Franklin. It is said there are but two longer ones in the world. The first bridge was built across Clarion River in 1834. The present one, which is of fine construction, is the third. Clarion, population 2,793, made county seat in 1840, is finally located on a hill 1,500 feet above sea level, on the Belfont and Meadville Turnpike. Public buildings face the park. Courthouse, third reconstruction, completed in 1882. Georgian, architect Mr. Betts, contains portraits of judges. Jail, Norman architecture, stone with brick front, was built in 1874. Connected with the State Normal School is a stone chapel containing busts of Abraham Lincoln and Henry W. Longfellow, also Navarre Hall, Spanish architecture, stone, brick, and concrete. Architects, Allison and Allison, Pittsburgh. Among the six churches are the Methodist and Presbyterian, stone, Roman architecture. The Women's Club has accomplished much for civic improvement, changing the cemetery from an unsightly spot to a place of beauty, planting the park with shrubbery and flower beds, and starting a free public library. In the park is a monument to Civil War soldiers. At Foxburg is a fine free memorial library. Colonial, native sandstone, architect Arthur H. Brocky, Philadelphia. In the Memorial Church of Our Father, native sandstone, architect James Sims, Philadelphia, is a painting by Edwin Howland Blashfield, The Angel of the Resurrection. End of section 60. Section 61 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Clinton County. Formed June 21, 1839, named for DeWitt Clinton, has superb scenic beauty. Lofty mountains, rolling hills, and highly productive valleys border the west branch of the Susquehanna River. About one-fourth is state forest reserve of mountainous wilderness, where large and small game, trout, and other fish abound. Chief industries are in vast deposit of commercial clay, from which is made fire, building and paving brick, tile sewer pipe, and concrete blocks, and a large chemical plant, very important in war chemicals, agriculture including tobacco growing, several creameries, and a large milk condensary. Lock Haven, with advanced road signs, county seat, population 8,559. Through the efforts of the city government, board of trade, and women's civic club, John Nolan of Cambridge, Massachusetts, was engaged to prepare a formal city plan for the future growth and development of the city. This plan includes no radical changes or extravagant improvements, but conforms to the requirements of a small community, embraces simple but definite plans for the aesthetic improvement of the fronts of the Susquehanna and Bald Eagle Rivers, between which Lock Haven is situated, the proper location and grouping of future public buildings, with a civic center at Monument Place, the intersection of the two main thoroughfares. The installation of modern street lighting systems with underground wires, and the gradual improvements in storefronts and business places. It calls for the establishment of drives, playgrounds, and parks, the acquiring of a woodland reservation adjoining Highland Cemetery at the edge of the town for a public park, and purchase of an outlying mountaintop for future recreation. Much of the plan has been carried out. A unique and beautiful parkway has been made by utilizing the abandoned basin of the old canal, which cut through the heart of Lock Haven. It had become a dump heap but under the Nolan plan was filled and has blossomed into one of the show places of the city, with flower beds, lawn, trees, and special landscape garden effect at each end. The riverfront has been made into a park. At entrance to the bridge over the Susquehanna, a modern structure built by the state which replaced a picturesque covered bridge built 1855, about 800 feet long, includes the old toll house, pronounced by Mr. Nolan a valuable asset for the city. A smaller, quaint, old covered wood bridge, same period, about four miles from Lock Haven, spans Bald Eagle Stream on Bald Eagle Valley Road. 
Near is the Clinton Country Club House, artistically built of cobblestones. Architect, Lester Kinsing, New York. The courthouse, red brick and brownstone, surmounted by two dome-shaped towers, built in 1869, on site of an earlier one built 1842, is on Water Street facing the river. On the riverfront is a stone marker, inscription, located in the stockade of Fort Reed, built 1775 for defense against the Indians. On the river road leading to Williamsport, near Mackelhattan, is site of Fort Horn, stone marker, both placed by the Hugh White chapter, DAR, to mark the last two of the Trail of Stockade fortifications, built along the river in defense of the pioneer settlers. Where Lock Haven stands was the original site of several Indian villages, burial places, and marked one of their great thoroughfares from the north to the coast. Granite Monument to 1938 Soldiers of Clinton County in the Civil War is in center of city. St. Paul's Protestant Episcopal Church, stone, gothic, with spire, built 1852 on Main Street, has memorial windows by Tiffany and Lamb, New York, and chancel window from England. The Immaculate Conception, Roman Catholic Church, built 1905, and Rectory, 1915, Gothic with two towers, Hummelstone Brownstone, Architect J. A. Dempwolf, York, PA, Corner of Water and Third Streets, is on the site of an earlier church built in 1857, dedicated by Rev. John C. Gilligan, pioneer missionary. Central State Normal School, on ground given by Philip Price of Philadelphia, founded 1871, includes 12 buildings on 32 acres of land, commanding extended view. The main building was erected in 1890. Architect A. S. Wagner, Williamsport. Art course includes the theory and practice of teaching art, industrial art and lectures on art history. Reproductions of paintings and European architecture, also replicas of sculpture, are placed about the buildings. Ross Memorial Free Library on Main Street, open 1910, further endowed by the late Wilson Kistler, sends traveling libraries to rural schools. Contains painting by E. H. Shearer, Ole Bulls, Castle in Potter County. A noteworthy collection of North American Indian relics, 10,000 pieces, owned by Dr. T.B. Stewart, has been offered as a loan to this library. The collection is especially rich in local relics of domestic life and implements of war. The Fallon House, built in 1855, still in excellent condition, is said to have been built with funds of Queen Isabella II of Spain, who invested largely of her private fortune in Pennsylvania, for a retreat in case of revolution. And Highland Cemetery is an exact reproduction of the St. Martin's Cross, 16 feet 8 inches high, on the island of Iona, off the coast of Scotland, erected in 1914 in memory of Samuel Richard Peel. End of section 61. Section 62 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interest in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Wyoming County. Formed April 4, 1842, named from the Wyoming tribe of Indians who occupied the land when the white settlers came, name signifies extensive flats. Lies in the north opening of the wonderful Wyoming Valley, celebrated for its fertility and beauty, surface diversified by numerous spurs of the Appalachian system, which tower into lofty peaks, Mount Soleka, 1,000 feet above the river, Mount Chodano, nearly opposite, about the same height, Mount Mechisong, still higher, at LaGrange. Several lakes are well stocked with fish. The largest, Lake Cary, three miles long, one mile wide, is surrounded by lofty pines and hemlocks. Glen Moneypenny, six miles below Tunkhannock, is a wildly picturesque location. Many such are to be found among the mountains of this country. This beautiful setting was the scene of Indian plottings that culminated in the Wyoming Massacre in 1778, see Luzerne County. The following year, General Sullivan's army passed through this region on March to subdue the Six Nations and encamped on the shore of the Susquehanna River at Tunkhannock, where the tannery now stands. Forty years ago, passenger pigeons were so plentiful that when they flew across the town in dense flocks, they obscured the sun. One colony occupied a strip of woodland in Wyoming County, seven miles long by three miles wide. Alexander Wilson wrote of counting 90 nests in a single tree. Chief industries, agriculture, and manufacturing. Tunkhannock, county seat, population 1,736, first called Putnam after General Israel Putnam of Revolutionary War, settled 1790, was incorporated 1841, lies due north and south, east and west. Courthouse on Courthouse Square has two marble tablets in the corridor with name of Revolutionary War soldiers buried within the limits of Wyoming County placed by Tunkhannock Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. The Soldiers' Monument is on the same grounds. Among the churches of different denominations, the Methodists may be mentioned for Gothic architecture. At Factoryville is the Keystone Academy. Crossing Tunkhannock Creek near Nicholson is the Tunkhannock Viaduct, said to be the largest concrete bridge in the world, 2,375 feet long, 240 feet high, above water level, height from bedrock 300 feet. 
carries the double tracks of the main line of the Lackawanna Railroad from mountain to mountain across the valley. End of section 62. Section 63 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archimbeau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Carbon County. Formed March 13, 1843, named for its coal deposits. Coal was first discovered by Philip Ginter in 1791 on top of Shark Mountain, now town of Summit Hill, nine miles southwest of Mach Chunk. In 1818, the Lehigh Navigation Company and the Lehigh Coal Company were formed, under skillful management, the almost insuperable obstacles in the way of transportation were overcome. Boats 18 feet wide by 25 feet long, two or more hinged together, were floated by artificial freshets on the Lehigh. Owing to the great fall in the river and consequent rapidity of its motion, dams were constructed near Mott's Chunk, with sluice gates, invented by Josiah White, a manager of the navigation company. They were the first on record used permanently. Lehigh coal is the hardest known anthracite in the world. Other mineral productions are iron, slate, and mineral paint. Wire rope was first invented in Mach Chunk. The first settlers were Moravian missionaries, who in 1746 purchased 200 acres on the north side of Mahoning Creek above its mouth for converted Mohican Indians. Each Indian family possessed their own lot of ground, and Maidenhuden became a town. The church stood in the valley, with the Indian houses forming a crescent on one side. On the other side was the missionaries' house and burial ground. The road to Wyoming lay through the settlement, being the famous warrior's path over Nescapec Mountain. In August, all partook of their own first fruits in a love feast. Christian Ranch and Martin Mack were the first missionaries residing here. Several parts of scripture had been translated into the Mohican language. The Holy Communion was administered every month, the Indians calling that the Great Day. In 1749, Bishop Baron John de Waterville went to Nadenhuden and laid the foundation of a large church, Indian congregation, 500 persons. After Braddock's defeat in 1755, the whole frontier was open to the savage foe, Suddenly, in 1757, the mission house on the Mahoning was attacked and burnt by French and Indians, and many inhabitants were murdered. A broad marble slab, placed there in 1788, near Lehighton, marks the grave of those massacred. In 1756, Benjamin Franklin was authorized by the provincial government to erect forts on the Lehigh. One opposite Nadenhuten was named Fort Allen for William Allen, the Chief Justice. At Weisport, in the rear of the Fort Allen house, may be seen the well dug under Franklin's supervision. It was within the enclosure of the fort and supplied the soldiers with water. Weissport was settled by Colonel Jacob Weiss, quartermaster general in the Revolutionary Army, on site of Fort Allen. Municipal parks are at Lehighton and Weissport, given by Jacob Weiss. Also at Lehighton is All Saints Chapel, early English Gothic. In 1780, Andrew Montour, leader of an Indian party, captured the Gilbert family, 12 persons, and took them over Mach Chunk and Broad Mountains into the Nescapec Path, across Quiquec Creek to Mahoning Mountain, over wild and rugged country to Canada. Eventually, they were all redeemed at Montreal in 1782 and returned to Byberry. A view of great scenic beauty is from Prospect Rock over the Nescapec Valley. Cloud Point, frequently covered by vapor, may be seen. Near is Glen Thomas with a picturesque amber cascade, named for David Thomas, pioneer of the iron trade. Glen Anoko, two miles above Mach Chunk, with its wild beauty, total ascent over 900 feet, forms the channel for the clear stream which flows over innumerable cascades to the Lehigh. The most noticeable are Chameleon Falls, 50 feet high, and Dinoco Falls, 90 feet high, with overhanging rocks covered with moss and ferns. Mach Chunk, county seat, population 3,666, Indian name means Bear Mountain, first settled in 1815, has one principal street following the tortuous course of Mach Chunk Creek as it winds through a narrow gorge between three high, steep, and rocky mountains averaging 850 feet above the town. The important buildings are directly on this street. Courthouse, Norman, Brownstone, quarried at Rockport, Carbon County, built in 1894. Jail, where some of the Molly Maguires were executed. The Dimmick Memorial Library, built in 1890, brick. Churches here and in East Mach Chunk are unusually handsome. St. Mark's Protestant Episcopal, Gothic, stone, has memorial windows by J. and R. Lamb. The Raridos is very beautiful. First Presbyterian, colonial, brick, has a memorial window by John Lafarge and one by Tiffany. The Immaculate Conception, Roman Catholic, also has fine stained glass windows. St. Paul's Methodist Episcopal is the oldest church in town. The women's clubs are seeking to improve conditions, sanitary and scenic, to widen the life of the town and in every way make it more in unison with its natural surroundings. In the limited space of the narrow valley, land is too precious to be used except for buildings, but the hills are so magnificent that they look to them for the necessary beauty. Flagstaff Park has natural effect. 
The first railroad in Carbon County and one of the oldest in the United States is the famous Switchback, a gravity road extending from Mach Chunk to Summit Hill, opened in 1832 for bringing coal from the mines to the canal. Used now only for pleasure. A double track is laid to the summit of Mount Pisgah, 2,322 feet distant from the foot, at an angle of 20 degrees, with elevation about 900 feet above the river. Seen from the top is superb, with a succession of mountain ridges rising range after range, with a distant view of Lehigh Water Gap, and farther to Schoolies Mountain in New Jersey. The principal attraction at Summit Hill is the burning mine, discovered to be on fire in 1859. General Craig of revolutionary fame resided here. End of section 63. Section 64 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Elk County. Formed April 18, 1843, possesses everywhere great scenic beauty. A large herd of elk, last known herd of the Black Forest, still existed, for which the county was named. The last elk was killed in 1857. The Black Forest formerly covered a vast area of northwest Pennsylvania, the deep green of the hemlock giving a mystery of blackness. Here many varieties of large and small animals abounded. Climate and geological formation differ from surrounding counties in ratio of altitude. The growing season is usually two or three weeks later on account of late frosts. Agriculture is now chief industry. Bituminous coal was discovered by Blind Mike on Priest's Land at St. Mary's in 1853 and is continuously worked. Natural gas, oil, high-grade clays, and shale are other mineral resources. Jim and Andy Park, 3,600 acres of almost virgin forest stocked with deer, through which a trout run flows, is the property of heiress of Senator James K. P. Hall and Honorable Andrew Call. Permission to inspect the park may be obtained at office of J. R. P. Hall at St. Mary's. Ridgeway, county seat, laid out in 1843 and named for Jacob Ridgeway, Philadelphia, who was United States Consul at Antwerp. Population, 6,037. Courthouse, center of town, built in 1872, Brick with clock tower, surmounted by a large statue of justice, stands in a well-kept park with jail in the rear. Main Street, very wide, paved with brick, has many fine residences. Forest Lawn Cemetery contains the Hall and Hyde family mausoleums and a large community mausoleum built in 1912. St. Mary's, 10 miles from Ridgeway, along the state road through beautiful scenery, is largest town in the county, population 6,967, known as the Summit City on a high plateau, Altitude, 1,660 to 1,950 feet. Has wide streets paved with brick and is surrounded by a fertile farming country. The Charles A. Luke Memorial Park, four acres, acquired by gift in 1873 for the public, was laid out by George C. Miller, landscape gardener of Boston, Massachusetts, in 1914, through St. Mary's Village Association. St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church, oldest and largest in the county, built in the 50s by the German Catholic colonists from plans made by the late Ignatius Garner, native undressed sandstone, recently dressed with cement, spoiling its rusticity. In St. Mary's Cemetery are buried Baron von Essel and many war veterans. Large German Benedictine college and convent conducted by the Sisters of St. Benedict, established 1862, is one of three schools in America which teach the Delisade system of voice culture, introduced by the venerable Sister Marie, who learned the system of the great Italian master. In the convent is said to be an original Van Dyck painting. Sacred Heart Church, native sandstone, Gothic. The Shiloh Presbyterian Church is an ecclesiastical building of native sandstone. At St. Mary's and Kersey Road is a small chapel, wood, old German design, built in 1870 by the late George Decker, in fulfillment of a vow. Prayer service is held here at stated times. Going east from Kersey, road leads through the Barrens, a sandy, rocky stretch of land denuded of vegetation by forest fires on the old Belfont Pike. Scenery is wonderful toward Mount Zion, where there is a typical country church and burial ground. At Mount Zion Corner, the road takes three courses. Left leads to Burndale with its 50 coke ovens, coal tipples, and washer plant. Wilcox, in northern part of county, lying in the famous gas belt of Elk County, has a large glass factory. A few miles back is Tambeen. Near here, President Grant, guest of General Thomas Kane, spent a day fishing for trout. From Wilcox, along the big level road, is Rosellis. Here, Captain, later General Kane, pinned a buck's tail on the hat of Hiram Woodruff, first member recruited for the Bucktail Regiment. On the old Milesburg and Claremont Pike, William C. Walsh carried the first mail through this section in 1828. End of section 64. Section 65 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Blair County. 
Formed February 26, 1846, named for Honorable John Blair, native of this county and public-spirited citizen. In 1820, he laid out and was president of the Huntington, Cambria, and Indiana Turnpike, first in this section. Blair County lies in the beautiful Juniata Valley, settled by Scotch-Irish, English, and Germans. Much of the soil is very fertile. Cheap industries, agriculture, coal mining, and manufacturing. It is the center of a network of roads, mostly built as turnpikes from 1830 to 50, now state roads. Tyrone, altitude 692 feet above sea level, population 9,084, outlet for important bituminous coal products, lies in a basin formed by the baseline of Old Tussie, a famous mountain, and the bold ridge known as Bald Eagle. The home of Captain John Logan, eldest son of Shikalemi, was at mouth of Bald Eagle Creek. Second son, James Logan, the Mingo chief, named for Secretary Logan of Germantown, went west to the Ohio. His son, Todd Kados, married a daughter of the chief corn planter. About three miles east from Tyrone is the Sinking Valley, named from the Sinking Creek, an underground watercourse. Near is Birmingham with a pleasure ground, where there are 100 springs and a large cave. A school for girls is here. Altoona, population 60,331, altitude 1,171 feet above sea level, founded by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1850, consists almost entirely of their shops and workmen's houses. St. Luke's Protestant Episcopal Church, native stone, first built in 1858, second building in 1881 using the same stone. Gothic, F.C. Withers, New York, architect. Has an English window, also won by Tiffany, The Resurrection, exhibited in Paris in 1900. Memorial to Almut E. Reed, Esquire. Brick Rectory and School, gift of General John Watts de Paster, as memory to his daughter, first school for advanced education in Altoona. In the Logan House, built 1854 by the Pennsylvania Railroad, was held the conference of the local war governors in 1862, namely A.G. Curtin, Pennsylvania, John A. Andrew, Massachusetts, Richard Yates, Illinois, Israel Washburn, Jr., Maine, Edward Solomon, Wisconsin, James K. Kirkwood, Iowa, O.P. Morton, by D.G. Ross, his representative, Indiana, William Sprague, Rhode Island, F.H. Pierpont, Virginia, David Todd, Ohio, N.S. Barry, New Hampshire, Austin Blair, Michigan, to devise ways and means for cooperating with President Lincoln in suppressing the rebellion. King Edward VII, as Prince of Wales, stopped here. On the William Penn Highway, formerly an old portage road, is site of an early historic hotel, Fountain Inn, mentioned by Dickens in American Notes. Here William Henry Harrison stopped overnight on his way to Washington in 1841 to be inaugurated President of the United States. Henry Clay and Jenny Lind also stopped here. Near junction of Sugar Run with Burgoon's Run, three miles south of Altoona, in 1781, Indians killed a number of militiamen from Fetter's Fort, built in 1775, by firing on them from ambush. On monument dedicated in 1909 marks the place where the wife of Matthew Dean and three of their children were killed by Indians in 1788, while he and the other children were working in the fields. In Blair County are also sites of Fort Roberdeau, built 1778, and Fort Lowry, 1779, unmarked. Magnificent views from Nopsonanok at Summit of the Alleghenies, Prospect Hill, and Catanning Point, where the Pennsylvania Railroad is carried around the famous Horseshoe Curve. A little farther, the Pennsylvania Railroad passes through a tunnel two-thirds of a mile long, 2,160 feet above sea level. Lakemont Park is a noted place of scenic beauty near Hollidaysburg, population 4,071, county seat, laid out in 1820, named for James Adam Holliday, who lived here prior to the Revolution. Courthouse, Romanesque, built 1876-77, to remodeled and enlarged in 1906. On grounds are jail, feudal style, architect John Haviland, and a soldier's monument. Highland Hall, stone, colonial doorway with beautiful grounds, is now Miss Cowell's School for Girls. Entrance to Old Presbyterian Cemetery is a Norman gate designed by Price J. McLanahan, Philadelphia. Hewn timbers held in place by bolts of wood, supporting a red-tiled roof. Main Street is part of the old turnpike between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, shaded by beautiful old trees. Here in the days of the canal in 1834, boats met the Portage Railroad at foot of the Alleghenies. Freight and passengers were carried over the mountain by inclined planes and stationary engines. By this means, travel from eastern Pennsylvania was continued through the Ohio River to the Mississippi. Charles Dickens took the trip over the mountain in 1842. The Allegheny Portage Railroad, in boldness of design and difficulty of execution, compared well with the passes of the Simplon and Mount Sinai. Ant Hill Woods, almost within town limits, were said to be the only hills of this kind in the country. They were written up in Century Magazine by Dr. McCook. A hill was taken to the Academy of Natural Sciences, Philadelphia. They are now level with the ground through vibration of the trolley. Less than a mile from town are Chimney Rocks, famous council chamber of the Indians, with a view of unsurpassed beauty of the Juniata Valley, Old Portage Road, and Allegheny Mountains. 
On Western Slope, much of the Portage Road is used for the highway. The monumental arch is still standing. End of section 65. Section 66 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Sullivan County. Formed March 15, 1847, named for General John Sullivan. Is noted for picturesque scenery, mountains, valleys, lakes, streams, and waterfalls, forests, and distant views. Either the scenic Williamsport and North Branch Railroad or the State Highway that parallel each other and enter the county near Munsee Valley lead to beautiful Eagles Mere, 1,900 feet above sea. On Lewis Lake, one and a half miles long, one half mile wide, depth never definitely determined, fed by subterranean waters. About the shore, tree-bound with luxuriant growth of rhododendron and laurel, and rock faced to deep water, there are lovely nooks and a bathing beach of white sand at the northern end. Passing from Eagles Mere through Celestia, where the lands were deeded in 1864 by Peter E. Armstrong and wife to Almighty God, the deed may be seen at the county courthouse, one comes to Laporte, population 175, highest and smallest county seat in Pennsylvania, 2,000 feet above sea level, with its natural beauties, including Lake Macoma, is also an attractive summer resort. It was laid out in 1850 by Michael Maylert, who owned the land and built the first courthouse. Present building facing the park is Romanesque. Brick. Beautiful Lombardy poplar trees are in the yard. Within the last 12 years, advanced civilization has penetrated into Sullivan County in good state highways, rural mail routes, telephones, and several borough and township high schools. The streets of Laporte are wide and well-kept, and the park is in care of the Ladies' Village Improvement Society. At the top of the mountain, on the road toward Stonestown, is Feister's View, where the deep valley of Muncie Creek, walled on the east by the towering North Mountain, 3,000 feet above tide, near Nordmont, is beautiful beyond description. At the junction of the big and little Loyal Sock Creeks is the pretty town of Forksville. Dr. Priestley purchased a large tract of land about here, laid out roads, and made many improvements. Four miles distant on the state highway toward Hillsgrove, on Kings Creek, is Lincoln Falls, a waterfall about 30 feet in height at the head of a gorge with perpendicular walls of rock, varying from 50 to 80 feet in height. A few deer, quite a number of bear, foxes, rabbits, and squirrels are in this county. A state game preserve is in the southeast near Jamison City. There are some good trout streams, and the lakes are well stocked with fish. The most valuable industry is coal from the Bernice coal fields in the east. The production of hemlock tanned sole leather is important. Farm products and dairying are general. End of section 66. Section 67 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. Edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Forest County. Formed April 11, 1848, named for its great variety of timber, hemlock and pine, east, dense forest of deciduous trees west along the Allegheny River. Game large and small abounds, streams are full of brook trout, atmosphere is fragrant with health-giving ozone, strengthening the weak and restoring those affected with lung trouble. Chief industry is lumbering, in western part agriculture, and the growing of fine apples. David Zeisberger, first white man in Forest County, came in 1767, Moravian missionary to the Monzies, a wild and warlike tribe. He stayed two years in their three villages, Goshkoshunk, Holman's Flats, Sequelenget, Place of Council, Tyanesta, and Lahunikamak, Meeting of the Waters, East Hickory, and migrated with them to Fort Pitt. After Monzies came the Senecas under Corn Planter in 1770. First settler, Cyrus Blood, surveyor, who cleared land for Marionsville, first county seat, and improved it. The Big Level, name of Old State Road, 1,728 feet above sea, follows northeast from Marionville to Mount Jewett, McKean County. Roadbed, compact and solid, 100 feet wide, was first made in Cyrus Blood's time. On this road is Beaver Meadows, formerly a dam built by beavers, which backed water over an area one and one quarter miles long by one eighth mile wide. Dam four and one half feet high. Along the Guitonville Road toward Marionville, on a high plateau with two miles of straight, natural, firm roadbed, is Job's Pinnacle, from which is a fine distant view of Tyanesta Valley. A mile farther, Pisgah, also a pinnacle, is on Salmon Creek Hill. The whole hill is composed of magnetic iron ore on a sandstone foundation, above shale and slate stratification. In surveying, the magnetic attraction is so great that the needle is paralyzed. It is a mass of rocks. Another magnetic iron ore hill is Bald Bluff, where lightning strikes freely. Stony Point, back of Salmon Creek Hill, near Newtown Mills, is the highest land. Scenery about here is so beautiful at the mouth of Salmon Creek that Erie and Williams, the early surveyor, called it Eden Revived. 
Beautiful scenery is along the state road parallel with the Sheffield and Tyanesta Railroad, crossing a large iron bridge over Tyanesta Creek at Nebraska, two miles farther over another iron bridge, and three miles to Ross Run. This land produces oil and gas in good quantities. At Kellettville on the Tyanesta, pieces of ancient pottery have been exhumed, showing that this was a home of a race older than the Indians, who had not made pottery in this section. Three miles above Kellettville is a long, sloping rock in the bed of Tyanesta Creek, Panther Rock, where Ebenezer Kingsley, a pioneer hunter, shot many cougars. State paid $20 bounty for a panther, $12 for a wolf. Picturesque falls are on Blue Jay Creek. Near its mouth is Rocky City on Tyanesta Creek, a vast aggregation of rocks like tall towers with grand scenery. Nearly opposite is a prehistoric square hole 40 feet deep, no record of its formation. Tyanesta, population 642, county seat, incorporated 1852. Principal buildings, courthouse on high ground and public square of two acres, brick, built 1870. Architect Keen Vaughn, contains proof copy of Zeisberger preaching to the Indians in Forest County in 1677, engraved by John Sartain, with a volume of Zeisberger's Life and Notes, a gift from the Pennsylvania Historical Society, Philadelphia, and a receipt signed by David Zeisberger, framed in wood of the wild cherry tree, under which, legend says, he originally preached, also portraits of prominent men of Forest County. Jail, brick and stone, in courthouse ground, built by Van Dorn Prison Company, Cleveland, Ohio, in 1895. The Forest County National Bank, Native Stone, Romanesque, built 1899. Architect C.M. Robinson, Altoona. Presbyterian Church, Brick, 1910, on the site of Old Wooden Church, built 1851. And Methodist Church, Brownstone, built 1909. Both contain memorial windows. End of section 67. Section 68 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margaret R. Chimbo. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Lawrence County. Formed March 20, 1849, named for Perry's flagship in the Battle of Lake Erie, which was named in honor of Captain James Lawrence, United States Navy. Lawrence was mortally wounded in the War of 1812 on the frigate Chesapeake against the British ship Shannon. As he was carried below, he said, don't give up the ship chiefly settled by Scotch-Irish. The old canal to Lake Erie, built in 1833, went through center of the county and did much to develop the resources, bituminous coal, iron ore, and limestone, chief industries, manufactories, and agriculture. Many beautiful drives are all through the county in every direction. The Moravian missionaries David Zeisberger and Gottlob Sensman were the first white men who dwelt here, long before the county was formed. They migrated with the Indians from Bradford County, through Forest County, and were the greatest missionary power to them. They were visited by Glickigan, a renowned warrior of great eloquence, who, with his escort, purposely tried to refute the doctrines of Christianity. They were received by Anthony, a native convert, who treated them courteously and made an impressive speech on Christian doctrine that astonished the visitors. Zeisberger, coming in then, confirmed his words, and Glickigan, instead of delivering his speech, replied, I have nothing to say. I believe your words. On return to his town, he advised the savages to go hear the gospel. He made them another visit, informed them that he had determined to embrace Christianity, and invited them, in the name of his chief, Pacock, to settle on land on Beaver River, near his town, Kaskaskunk, now Newcastle. This land was to be for the exclusive use of the mission. The offer was accepted, and on April 17, 1770, they left Oil Creek in 15 canoes. In three days they reached Fort Pitt, proceeded down the Ohio to Beaver River, and descended that river to the locality given, now Moravia passing an Indian village, near present Newport, of women, all single, and pledged never to marry. When in camp, they sent an embassy, Zeisberger, and Abraham, a native, to Pacock, who were received by the chief at his own house. He gave them welcome and pledged protection. They built houses, cleared land, planted, and prepared for winter. The Indians began to visit them. The Monzies from Goshkoshunk were the first to cast their lot with the Christian Indians. Glickigan soon came and became a Christian force. Finally, the Monzies adopted Zeisberger into their tribe. The ceremony took place at Kaskaskunk. They invested him with all the rights and privileges of a Monzi. This proved a complete triumph and was the source of much good influence among Indians. White settlers began to come after Wayne's Treaty of Greenville in 1795. Newcastle, county seat, incorporated as a city in 1869, population 44,938, was laid out at the junction of the Shenango, Neshanoc, and Mahoning Rivers, where they formed the Beaver River, in 1798, by John C. Stewart from Newcastle, Delaware. It has natural gas, fine churches, schools, public buildings, bridges, and many beautiful residences, including that of ex-Lieutenant Governor William M. Brown on the North Hill. 
Courthouse Colonial built in 1852 in spacious grounds on a hill in east part of the city. The First Methodist Episcopal Church has a memorial window to Ira D. Sankey, the singing evangelist, who was born and lived here. Subject 90 and 9. Maker, Sellers, New York. Also Hoffman's Christ in stained glass. High school, brick, of best school construction, well lighted. Has reproductions on the walls of fine works of art. The Oak Park Cemetery has some beautiful memorials. This is one of the manufacturing communities of western Pennsylvania, which form the greatest industrial district in the world. Within a radius of 60 miles of Newcastle, the annual tonnage is over 200 million, while the combined annual tonnage in and out of Liverpool, London, Hamburg, Suez Canal, and New York is 116 million. The American sheet and tin plate mill is said to be the largest in the world. They constructed a miniature playground for the only exhibit sent from Newcastle to the Panama Pacific Exposition in 1915. It showed the kind of humanitarian work done by the company, and was representative of this city, where the playground has done a vast amount of good among the foreign population employed in the immense furnaces. Engineering works, and the great cement plants making 5,000 barrels of Portland cement daily. The United States Steel Corporation, Carnegie Steel Company, maintains children's playgrounds with a moving picture theater. Average attendance, 1,800 children daily. The Rosina Blast Furnace Yard is kept like a park in grass, flower beds, and neatness. Cascade Park has great natural beauty. A part of the beautiful Slippery Rock is in the southeast of this county. At Mount Jackson is Battery Bee Monument, in memory of the Roundhead Regiment. New Wilmington, population 8,861, has Westminster College, under United Presbyterian Administration. Near here was the McKinley Blast Furnace, owned and operated by President McKinley's father. His son worked here as a boy. End of section 68. Section 69 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Fulton County. Formed April 19, 1850, named for Robert Fulton. The Tuscarora Mountains rise like a huge barrier on the eastern boundary, with numerous other ridges and peaks. Streams that flow into the Potomac River are largely fed by splendid limestone springs. From the Susquehanna to the Ohio River, the scenery cannot be surpassed for picturesque beauty. Far sweeping valleys, rugged mountains, grand forests, from a constantly changing panorama. It is both beautiful and historic. The Chambersburg and Pittsburgh Turnpike, built in 1814 to 15, now the Lincoln Highway, was first an old Indian trail from Harrisburg through Fort Loudoun, Clinton County, and westward to Bedford, crossing the center of the county. In the days following Braddock's defeat in 1755, this region became the area in which the Red Warrior of the Forests and the White Frontiersmen fought to the death. Not a valley, creek, nor mountain range, site of modern city or town, but what was the scene of thrilling events, some of which influenced the world for all time. Early settlers were Scotch-Irish, on the Ochwick, and on the Great Cove. Chief industries, iron ore, bituminous, coal, and agriculture. Dickey's Mountain in the southeast is rich in hematite and fossil ores. McConnellsburg, county seat, population 689, land granted to William and Daniel McConnell by warrant in 1762, is in the heart of the Great Cove. It was laid out in 1786, and in 1830 was one of the most important stopping places on the old turnpike. Here, from 1827 to 47, were the Hanover Iron Works, two furnaces and two forges, that used hematite ore, mined from Lowry's Knob, one mile distant. It is said that no territory of equal extent in this state is so rich in iron ore as is Fulton County. Fort Littleton in the north was one of a chain of government forts from the east to Fort Pitt. Burnt Cabins, on the Old State Road, was named because of the burning of the cabins of early settlers near here by the provincial authorities. It is said that Fulton County contributed more men to the Civil War in proportion than any other county in Pennsylvania. End of section 69. Section 70 of Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla, Montour County. Formed May 3, 1850, named for Catherine Montour. Surface hilly, traversed by several barren ridges. Muncie Hills lie along the northwest border, while down the river for miles stretches the Montour Ridge, furnishing quantities of best iron ore. There is also finest limestone, and much fertile land, drained by the Chillisquaki and Mahoning Creeks. Chief industries are iron and steel production and manufactories. Here it is said the first T-rail was made in 1844, and the first cannon in the United States, made of anthracite iron, was cast at the foundry in 1842. Danville, county seat, population 6,952, was settled in 1790. Beautifully located, it nestles between Bald Top and Blue Hill. 
Mahoning Creek, named after a tribe of Indians who peopled this part of the country, flows through the town, which is built on part of the tract of land surveyed on Warren of John Penn to John Lukens, Surveyor General of the United States, dated January 31, 1769. A bridge built by the state in 1904 is one quarter mile long and connects Montour with Northumberland County. At its entrance is Riverfront Park, laid out in 1912, with concrete walks, flower beds, and fountain. Market Street Park, center of town, has an electrically lighted fountain. Memorial Park, a beautiful knoll, was formerly the burial ground of the Presbyterian Church. In 1908, it was laid out as a park with flower beds and is kept up by the council and public-spirited citizens. The Soldier's Monument is here, with two cannon of the Civil War near. Courthouse, Georgian, built in 1871. Jail built, 1892. Architect, J.H. Brugler. Has modern equipment and for months at a time is empty. Among the 15 churches, the most notable in architecture is Christ Memorial, Protestant Episcopal, 14th century, English Gothic. Massive architecture. Native limestone of varied tints, with Ohio stone for the trace reed windows. The Thomas Beaver Free Library, Young Men's Christian Association with Gymnasium and Swimming Pool. George F. Geisinger Memorial Hospital and State Hospital for the Insane, constructed by S.S. S. Schultz, M.D., cornerstone laid by Governor Geary in 1869, are all important buildings, among the best equipped and most modern in the state. Washingtonville is the site of Fort Bosley on the Chilisquaki Creek. End of section 70. Section 71 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambault. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Snyder County. Formed March 2, 1855. Named for Honorable Simon Snyder, Governor of Pennsylvania, 1808-17. to Three terms. Noted as the first governor to urge legislation for free public schools. He was the Great War Governor of 1812. Served in the Assembly from 1789 to 1808, and was Speaker of the House from 1802 to 08. He lived at Sealands Grove. From end of the Northumberland Bridge, built by Theodore Burr in 1814, on west branch of the Susquehanna, the road leading south to Sealands Grove passes Blue Hill, noted for beautiful scenery. On top was formerly Hotel Shigalemi, burned in 1895. On one of the rocks overhanging is a natural profile named for Shigalemi, who sauntered about here. Farther on is the single arch stone bridge. For half a mile, beginning at this bridge, it is a state road built by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Governor Pennypacker handled the first shovel of dirt in 1904. It was laid out first by James F. Lynn in 1829, has since been extended. Sealands Grove, first settlers in 1755, were all killed by Indians, laid out by and named for Anthony Sealand in 1827. Population, 1,937. Governor Snyder Mansion, built by himself in 1816, is near center of town. Colonial, massive stone walls, with arch door 10 feet high and large side porch in well-kept grounds. Due west from Sealands Grove toward Middleburg is Susquehanna University formerly Missionary Institute, collegiate and theological courses, six large and several small buildings. Main building, Sealands Grove Hall, was built in 1859, Gustavus Adolphus Hall in 1895, contains collection of 42 pictures of Gustavus Adolphus, also brass memorial tablet to the men appointed in 1856 by the Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Maryland to organize the Missionary Institute. The buildings contain portraits of Governor Simon Snyder, members of the faculty, and other Lutheran clergymen, on the campus is a granite Celtic cross marking grave of the founder, Benjamin Kurtz, D.D., L.L.D., in the Old Lutheran Cemetery is grave of Governor Snyder, Quincy Granite Monument, surmounted with his bust, life-size, erected by the state in 1885. Two miles west is Salem, Rose Church, Log, built 1780, modernized in 1897. In Creamer, it was the old brick hotel used for special sessions of the court before 1855 for cases in immediate neighborhood. A short distance in the field stands the old blockhouse, erected before 1781, where white settlers gathered in defense against Indians. One mile farther west, in 1781, Indians killed five members of the Stock family. Ten miles west from Sealands Grove is Middleburg, county seat, 498 feet above sea level, population 984, laid out in 1800. In Glendale Cemetery is grave of Honorable George Creamer, nephew of Governor Snyder, and member of the legislature, 1812-13. Member of Congress, 1823 to 27. Also grave of Captain Frederick Evans, member of state legislature, 1810 to 11, a defender at Fort McHenry, Baltimore, where in 1814, the Star Spangled Banner was written by Francis Scott Key. On the banks of Stumps Run is a shaft monument to soldiers and sailors of this country who fought in different wars. Erected in 1904 by county commissioners, Soldiers Memorial Building, open to the public, is near the Lutheran Church. It was dedicated in 1908. Interior lined with marble. Names of all soldiers and sailors of Snyder County are preserved within its walls. John F. Stetler, architect. 
wooden bridge across Middle Creek in good repair, is said to have been built in 1808 by John Arend. Two miles west of town are the Hassinger Lutheran Churches, General Council East, present building erected in 1871, third on original site, first building in 1785. A split occurred, and the General Synod members built in 1782, a quarter mile west, present church in 1915. Almost due south is Paxtonville, 510 feet above sea level, has wooden bridge over Middle Creek built in 1851. John Bilger, builder, and ruins of Beaver Blast Furnace, once busiest industry in Middle Creek Valley, erected by Honorable Nur Middlesworth, the Kern Brothers, and John C. Wilson, 1848 to 1856. It was operated until 1866, power secured from a 200-foot head of water running over two overshot wheels, one over the other. Westward is farm of Nur Fees, on which gold and silver were discovered. Beaver Town, population 525, 651 feet. Originally Swift Town, named for John Swift, who had the land patented in 1760. Was residence of Honorable Nur Middlesworth from 1792. He was re-elected 13 times member of legislature, twice Speaker of the House, in 1828 and 1836. Member of Congress, 1853 to 55. His last public service was that of the associate judge. Beaver Springs, elevation 591 feet, laid out in 1806. Early chief industry, ore mines. Scenic beauty from Shade Mountain. A long ridge, summit near Beaver Springs, 1,672 feet above sea level. McClure, six miles west, is where folding houses are manufactured. The largest ever made was produced here and shipped to South America. End of section 71. Section 72 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Section 72. Cameron County. Formed March 29, 1860. Named in honor of Honorable Simon Cameron, state senator at that time. Situated among the spurs of the Alleghenies, altitude varies from 794 feet to 2,100 feet above sea level. The Cinnamahoning Creek and its tributaries drained three quarters of the county into the Susquehanna. Along these waters, roads were cut and towns built for the extensive early lumbering and tanning operations. Primeval forests of hemlock, oak, cherry, elm, and some of the finest white pine in the state. Beds of coal and fire clay still await development. Salt spring and a mineral spring of rare medicinal value are near Sizerville. The county is now largely given up to the manufacture of high explosives, nitrogelatine, smokeless powder, gun cotton, picric acid. In 1915, there was a merger of four powder companies who created a plant of vast proportions, over 100 buildings, extending from the ridge of Emporium for over a mile along the banks of Driftwood Creek. Emporium, county seat, population 3,036, incorporated 1861, altitude 1,031 feet above sea level, first settled in 1811 as Shippen, name changed through deference to an old tradition. In 1785, an agent of the Holland Land Company, owning large territories in Pennsylvania and New York, removed the bark from a tree where the town now stands and carved the word Emporium. A typical mountain town, the streets follow the winding way of Driftwood Stream, or climb the mountainside where magnificent views of scenic grandeur await the beholder. Best architecture, the Episcopal Church, brown stone, English chapel design, Cram and Ferguson of Boston, architects, built in 1901. Other denominations have modern brick buildings. The large brick courthouse, built 1890, is in a park on the hillside overlooking the town. In the grounds is a monument to soldiers of the Civil War. Cameron, in 1889, 100 coke ovens, beehive design, were built here to coke the coal in the nearby hills for the blast furnace at Emporium, now abandoned, and today mountain wildflowers bloom along the row of silent hearths. Sterling Run, in this quaint village belongs the honor of the first church in the county, Presbyterian, the Pine Street Church erected in 1826, so called in consequence of the old Pine Street Church, Philadelphia, contributing funds to pay the workmen and buy the windows, the lumber and much of the construction being donated by pioneers. Built of hewn pine logs, chinked with plaster of moss and mud, and fastened with hand-wrought nails, this little chapel indoors, while those who shaped it sleep in the little churchyard at its threshold. Driftwood, near the Crescent, a half-moon-shaped mountain forming sides of the valley for nearly three points of the compass, claims the first settlement by white man within the county in 1804. In the center of the village, facing the Cinnamahoning Creek, is the Bucktail Monument, in memory of Cameron's sons who fought for the Union, erected by the state in 1908. Inscription. From this town on April 27, 1861, the Cameron, Elk, and McKean County Rifles, under leadership of Thomas L. Kane, afterwards commanding officer of the regiment, later a major general, embarked on four rafts for Harrisburg, where they were mustered into the service of the state and formed the nucleus about which the Bucktail Regiment of the Pennsylvania Reserve Corps was organized, which during its time of service was almost continuously attached to the Army of the Potomac. 
Cinema Honing, Stony Lick, site of an Indian village called The Lodge, the battleground of Peter Grove, the famous Indian fighter, a picturesquely beautiful spot. Here was born the beautiful Claflin sisters, Lady Cook, Tennessee Claflin, and Mrs. Martin Woodhull, Victoria Claflin, now a wealthy philanthropist in England. Their father, Buckman Claflin, a pioneer, opened the first store in the county in 1829. End of section 73. Section 73 of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania, edited by Margareta Archambeau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Tatiana Chichilla. Lackawanna County. Formed August 13, 1878, named for the Great Lackawanna Coal Basin, an Indian word signifying the forks of the stream. Chief industry, anthracite coal mining, confined to the long depressed trough forming the Lackawanna Valley and to the mountains bordering it on both sides, with Bald Mountain and Lackawanna Ridge. 2,250 feet high, and Big Stony among the Music Mountains, 2,230 feet. Originally settled by Connecticut people who disputed the right of Pennsylvania to jurisdiction, life and growth have been the result of the coal mining industry, which brought into it large numbers of Welsh, Irish, German, English, and Scotch, whose descendants dominate the region. Latterly have come Polish, Slavs, Italians, and Lithuanians, a heterogeneous but rapidly assimilating mining population. The mining of anthracite coal began at Carbondale in the early 20s, the old number one plain is marked with monument and tablets. Coal was taken over the Music Mountains to Honesdale, Wayne County, by steep inclined plains, up which the loaded cars were drawn by ropes or cables, and the empty cars let down, thence by canal to round out on the Hudson. On the levels between plains, cars were drawn by horses. Later, a descending grade was given to the tracks, over which the cars ran by gravity. A similar gravity railroad near Scranton carried coal to the Delaware and Hudson Canal at Hawley, below Honesdale, both now abandoned for steam roads. The county northwest has well-cultivated farmlands. That southeast blends with the Pocolo Highlands, is wild and picturesque, an almost unbroken wilderness for 30 miles, excepting along the line of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. On both sides of this road are good highways. The main road, the whole length of the valley, is exceptionally fine. The road from Goldsboro Station was built by Jay Gold, 1855, when he was interested with Mr. Pratt in a tannery at Goldsboro, now Thornhurst. At Carbondale, crossing Music Mountains, is road to Honesdale, Following the line of the old Delaware and Hudson Gravity Road, at Dundaff, about five miles north of Carbondale, this road runs along the edge of Crystal Lake. Near are the twin knobs of Elk Hill, about 2,500 feet high. A point of geologic interest is the Archbald Pothole, said to be the largest of the kind in this country. A cylindrical hole 20 feet deep by 30 feet wide, eroded in the Ice Age through the overlying rocks down to the coal measures. Scranton, county seat, population 137,783, laid out on site of an Indian village, Muncie Tribe, began as an iron town. Iron in large quantities was found in the hills three miles south of the city, and a suitable quantity of limestone was also supposed to exist there, but the coal business superseded. The old ore mine and abandoned road to furnaces at Scranton are of historic and picturesque interest. The courthouse on Washington Avenue near center of town stands in a square of ground, Romanesque, West Mountain Stone, built 1881-84. Architect S.G. Perry. St. Luke's Protestant Episcopal Church, Wyoming Avenue near Linden Street, Gothic, West Mountain Stone, built 1866-71. Architect R.M. Upjohn, New York. Contains Tiffany mosaic panel, back of font, baptism of Christ. Also Tiffany window and chancel, the ascension. St. Peter's Cathedral at corner of Wyoming Avenue in Linden, Italian Renaissance, brick, built 1866. Architect Joel Amsden. Remodeled 1883 by Durand, Philadelphia. Administration Building of the International Correspondence Schools, Wyoming Avenue between Vine and Mulberry Streets, Gothic, West Mountain Stone, built in 1898. Architect W. Scott Collins. Window by Kenyon Cox, made in 1898, Science Instructing Industry. The Scranton Public Library, Albright Memorial, is placed as an accent of beauty, corner of Washington Avenue and Vine Street, French Chateau style, 15th and 16th centuries, after Clooney Museum, Paris. Gray Indiana limestone and brown Medina stone laid in coarse ashlar, built in 1893. Architects Green and Wicks, Buffalo, New York. Contains portraits of Joseph J. Albright, painted in 1902. Artist, Bayard Henry Tyler. And of John J. Albright, artist Chartrain, France. Stained glass windows are illustrative of celebrated book bindings in the past. Marble mosaic floors in the entrance hall. Second Presbyterian Church, Jefferson Avenue between Vine and Mulberry Streets, Romanesque. West Mountain Stone, built 1885, has Tiffany Windows, Charity, and Hope. Madison Avenue Synagogue near Vine Street, Byzantine, West Mountain Stone, built 1902, architect George W. Kramer, New York. 
First Presbyterian Church, corner of Madison Avenue and Olive Street, perpendicular Gothic. Indiana Limestone, built 1903. Architect, Holden, New York. Windows by John Lafarge. The Woman at the Well, and by Tiffany, The Ascension. Tiffany Mosaic, Pentecost. Emmanuel Baptist Church, corner of Jefferson Avenue and Mulberry Street, Gothic, Hummelstown Redstone, built 1909. Architect, Edward Langley, Scranton. Elm Park Church, corner of Linden and Jefferson Streets, Romanesque, West Mountain Stone, built 1892. Architect, George W. Kramer. Lackawanna Railroad Station, Lackawanna and Jefferson Avenues, Renaissance, Indiana Limestone, Granite Base, built 1909. Architects, Kenneth Murchison, New York, and Edward Langley. Has interior finishings of groovy tiles, and mosaic mural panels of views along the Lackawanna Railroad. The Everhart Museum of Natural History, Science, and Art in Nayog Park, south end of Mulberry Street, given by the late Dr. I.F. Everhart and sustained by generous endowment. Renaissance Terracotta, built 1908. Architects, Blackwood and Nelson. Contains also the Hollister Collection of Indian Curios. Much natural beauty centers about the water supply system of the Scranton Gas and Water Company, which has over 10 miles of fine driveways, including the road to top of Mount Anonymous, overlooking the lake, and Long Swamp Drive, and roads up about Scrub Oak Mountain. End of section 73. End of A Guidebook of Art, Architecture, and Historic Interests in Pennsylvania.